All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another serving of Nerd Takeout. We're glad you've you've come back to listen to us talk tonight. Is a at least maybe for us an eagerly anticipated podcast. Uh, you know, the Dark Knight Rises. I think we kind of formed this podcast with the mentality that we we're going to do this one. So now that this one's out of the way, I'm not really sure what we're going to do after this. This no might idea. be the last one ever. So <laughs> we got to go out with the bang, right? Um, so, anyways, before we get started. I would, I would like to throw out some thank yous. First of all, I, I, I continually still want to thank Garrett Landry, whose logo is still absolutely by far the best thing about this podcast. 100%. Yeah. Um, so I want, to thank, I want to thank him for that. Um, I, I, I told our friend Alex Smith we'd thank her because we totally spammed her wall <laughs> with a uh, nerd takeout link. So thank you, Alex, for tolerating that and letting us use your Facebook as a uh, plug line. Um, and we want to thank y'all. We've we've gotten a lot of good feedback. We've got people listening. People are interested. People have given us constructive criticism, and we appreciate that because we really just kind of started this as just something to do for fun. Um, and y'all have allowed us to kind of escalate that to the next level. So we appreciate that, and we really, really, really do appreciate y'all telling us what you like, what you don't like, how we can improve. Um, so yeah, and we want to thank our friend Newcastle who will be joining us uh, for this podcast. And last but not least, we want to thank Matthew, the Beard of Doom, who has agreed to give up his uh, very busy schedule. Yes, his Monday night for a, for a free beer and recording for us. So Matthew, thank you. Um, yeah. Anyways, all right. So before we get rolling into the Dark Knight Rises, okay. Obviously, heads up. Uh, there will obviously be spoilers for this film. No. I'm going to work under the assumption that there will be spoilers for all of the Batman films. Yep. So if you haven't seen them or this is going to bother you to hear about it, we we'll probably turn spoil it off. everything related to Batman that we could possibly Or, or the Avengers yeah. or Spider Man <laughs> yeah. or yeah. Every, every superhero. Thing. Spoil we'll probably else. mention Mass Effect at least once in this. this I doubt it's it. called Spoiler Takeout now. Yeah. Yep. Spoiler Takeout, yeah. If so. You haven't... You're not in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you already got your thanks. The beard speaks. No, I was gonna say if you haven't seen it, then get the fuck out. Yep. Like, <laughs> there you go. Have you not seen it? Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Says the guy who hasn't seen it. Yeah. So let me put um, the space bar once we're done. So, Matthew, I almost heard you as clearly as Bane. No, um, but all right. So the Dark Knight Rises. Now, before we get into this, just a heads up. I I don't know the length of this podcast. Obviously, at this point in recording time, but I would assume that this one is going to be fairly lengthy. Uh, we have a lot of opinions about a lot of things in this movie. Two two hours and forty five minutes worth of uh, material to discuss. We could edit everything out and just have my opinion. Well, we I could, but then this podcast would suck. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. So, anyways, before we get before we get into this, last week we kind of started something where, you know, we we play a lot, we watch a lot, we read a lot. We in our take out encourage reading, especially our blog, which Andrew occasionally contributes, but Neil pretty much lifts the heavy weight of that. But when I do, it's a heavy hit. Oh, it, it is. is. It does, it does good. That's a heavy hitting pile of crap. No, no, <laughs> just kidding. It's good. It's good. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Yeah. Um, You're my favorite author. I quit. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good, guys. So go check it out. Um, I haven't written because their writing ability scares the hell out of me. Yeah, it's intimidating, isn't it? It's extremely intimidating, so go check them out. Great. Uh, I'm very proud of you, too. I, I just know. want to Good go on record saying that. That's high five. Yeah, um, that's not. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so anyway, so we play a lot, read a lot, read, read books. There's no excuse not to read books. Um, of the comic variety, yeah. it's my favorite. Yeah, so anyway, so Jermichael, is there anything besides Batman? Because other things did happen this week besides Batman. Is there anything that you read, played, saw, anything like that that is worth mentioning to encourage people to participate in it or not encourage people? Well, you know, it, it's summertime, and so summertime. that means it's, there's plenty of time for video games, you guys. Uh, that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing new right now. I'm actually gone back uh, quite a few years uh, playing a couple different things right now. Mainly um, Final Fantasy VI I'm playing through completely. I've tried it a couple times. going going all the way this time. And uh, mm. and I've really been playing a lot of Wind Waker, which is my first time through Wind Waker as well. It's pretty. So it's very, it's excellent. Uh, I would highly recommend Wind Waker, I guess, if you haven't, didn't play it ten years ago. Yeah, I think it holds I up. I think so, it holds up graphically and, and gameplay-wise. Cause, but yeah, no, I, nice. I completely agree. And I'm having a blast with it. I can't put it down. Um, other than that, that's kind of really what I've been doing is playing all the video games I never got around to. So, uh, 
Andrew. Recently, I haven't done a whole lot besides watch Batman. He's <laughs> 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 just been sitting in the that's theater kinda, nonstop. Been catching up on Batman. Over and watching that's more Batman. kind of all I've been doing, but um, I opened up finally my copy of Assassin's Creed Revelations, and I played oh, yeah. the first memory sequence to that the other day, which was okay. I that, guess. That's what yeah. you'll say about that entire game. Yeah. yeah. That was okay. Okay. Yeah, that was okay. Yes. Um, but, that's it. That, other than um, that. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I haven't been doing anything else other than Batman <laughs> either, actually. And I've uh, started just reading a whole bunch of Batman comics because they were all on sale for a dollar. So I was reading things like Batman No Man's Land and uh, Dark Knight Returns, which some of that stuff you can tell it really was an inspiration for the way Christopher Nolan did a lot of his Batman. So it's been good. So read some comics. Cool. Yeah, I you know, I, you recommended that app to me. What is it? Comicsology? And... I, Batman, a lot of the Batman comments are a dollar this week. I got some free stuff, and I, you know, I don't have an iPad, so I'm looking at it on my mobile phone, and uh, it's cool. I, it goes from panel to panel. Yeah, so it goes yeah, from panel to, to panel. To it's it's easy to read. Now, I again, I have most of what I've been watching is Batman to catch up for the Dark Knight Rises. Um, I saw another. I watched another movie this week. Not worth mentioning. I did. I, I've been busy, so I I did pick up. Last week, I talked about how I'd started playing The Witcher two picked it back up and just I, I don't know the further you get into that game the the more fun it is so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend that even if you don't really like fantasy um, it's still it's still a fun game it's a fun game for combat the story's good it's a it's a good That's, it's a good game I, I haven't played it yet but I've heard that the storyline is what drives this thing I heard it's right. beautifully written. It is. That, that's the like the drawing point of that game. It's like if Bioware could write. Oh, perfect. They, made that they game. need to. Yeah. Maybe they they would have made that game. Yeah. Which yeah. um, we say we weren't going to talk about. Yet? I didn't say. Um, we didn't say anything yeah. about anything that we might have had the first podcast yeah. about. Um, um, I, I, how about Steam sale? Anybody get on? Yeah, that? you know, for two dollars and fifty cents, I got Knights of the Old Republic. Perfect. Yeah, I just yeah. closed my wallet for the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> just pretended like the Steam sale didn't happen. Oh so. man. I, I bought quite a few. I bought the Darkness Two. Mm. I gave it sixty dollars. Did you? I got it for twelve. Have you played it yet? Yeah. You, the first level, the dem- I played the demo level where you're in the restaurant. Oh, dude, dude, yeah, yeah. it's very right. visual. That's definitely that's worth twelve dollars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not sixty. That no, first level, twelve dollars. That's a great deal. So I, I got a good thing. A lot of fun stuff on Steam. Um, so if anyone cares, I got Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Good cool. job, good job, good game. <laughs> Warhammer's awesome. War, yeah. Okay, so Batman. Are we gonna talk about Batman? All right, I guess. I guess Didn't we, we talk will. About that yeah. We watched it, right? That's it. Heck. Yeah, we don't really so, care enough to talk about. All right. So podcast we the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rises, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> even. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Does he work? The Dark Knight wait. Rises. So does he? Let's so we're gonna start. With, so we're gonna break this down a little bit. We're gonna start giving our very quick opinions of it. A quick summary of what we thought. Um, then we're gonna roll into the characters. Did did we all see it twice or no? I only saw it. Opening okay. Uh, so, so you get to talk uh, half the time. Right. So yeah, me, okay. Andrew, and Josh all saw it twice, and uh, John Michael only saw it once. Right. So. Right. So Matt, how many times did you see it? None. 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 All right. So I don't get to talk at all. That's right. That's how it usually is. That's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we love you, Matt. But yeah, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna give you a quick kind of rundown of what we thought. Uh, we're gonna get into the characters because uh, you know, new Batman movie, new characters, new villain. That's just one of the main things. We'll probably take a break after that. We're gonna actually indulge into the every you know everything kind of surrounding that, Meetable. and then and then we'll finish it up with uh, with some other things. But all right. So, Joe Michael, since you're rejoining us this week, you get to go first. Okay. Uh, overall impressions, I would recommend the movie to people. Um, it was a good movie, but that doesn't mean it didn't have quite a few issues with it. Um, again, we'll be getting into the meat of things later, but I guess that's the bottom line is, yes, I liked it, but there were things about it I didn't like. So. Okay. All right, Drew? I kind of feel the same way. I know there were problems with it, but... I was entertained the whole time, and I loved it. I, I loved it a lot. Um, so I, uh, when I first saw it, I wasn't, I wasn't really sure even what I thought of the movie, but um, I definitely enjoyed myself while I was in the theater. But um, after seeing it again for the second time, I still feel like it was a really good ending to the trilogy. And over, overall, I liked the movie. Um, I liked it a lot better than Batman Begins, but now after... Which <laughs> you watched but, again wait, since the last yeah, podcast, but after, but after seeing The Dark Knight Rises, 
it made Batman Begins more relevant to me. Mm -hmm. And so I actually did get more enjoyment out of Batman Begins the second time I watched it after actually seeing The Dark Knight Rises. So, yeah. Um, For me... So, I... It's very hard for me to say I liked a movie, didn't like a movie. There are a lot of very, very, very strong elements of this film. I don't know if I've said it on this podcast before, but I've certainly said it. Is that I, I really like Christopher Nolan, and even a Christopher Nolan, even a movie that I would consider a lesser Christopher Nolan film, I still consider a fairly good movie. Right. Um, so there are a lot of good things about it, but the first time I watched it, more than anything else, I was just disappointed. Mm-hmm. I just I felt disappointed. I think like you, and wasn't really sure what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, when I went back and saw it again, I think I was more okay with it just because I, I think I knew I was disappointed. But really, the things that I liked about it the first time, I kind of liked a little bit more. There was a little bit more clarity because I think Christopher Nolan packs a lot of information in his films, and you need to see it. But I just – overall, it was it was good. It's It was an – it was a, overall. I just have to say that it was as enjoyable as I thought it was. Overall, I felt like it was a disappointment. See, and I just I just want to clarify that I wasn't I wasn't disappointed by the movie when I first saw it, even though I was kind of confused in my opinion on it, just because I went into the movie right. with relatively low slash realistic expectations that I wasn't. I felt like Christopher Nolan could do two things: he could either try to remake The Dark Knight or try to go a different route with the next movie. And I feel like going another route was the smart decision, right. and he did that. I'm just not sure if, when all the pieces came together, how well that really came together. So I think that not trying to remake The Dark Knight is a really good idea. I, I, I agree yes. 100%. And I, yeah. I, do, I do feel like there were a lot of people that really enjoyed the movie. Mm. Now, let's just dispel this really quickly. A lot of people who did enjoy the movie, have I have heard this count a lot, well... It wasn't supposed to be the Dark Knight. That's that's why you didn't like it. And I don't agree with that at all. I, I don't I don't think this was going to be the Dark Knight. I knew it was going to be a different kind of movie. I knew Bane was going to be a different kind of villain. But there was a certain standard I believe that Christopher Nolan set in 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 themes and consistent storytelling. But I, I don't. But we'll we'll get into that in a second. Hey Josh, um, I'm gonna put you on the spot for a second. <laughs> Let's hit it. Um, was the Dark Knight Rises? Christopher Nolan's worst movie. You can pause on that. We can come back to it. Why don't you think about that? I will think about that, and we'll come back to that. Everybody, Unless you want to answer. What's everybody it. else's I'll, opinion? On yeah, that. we can. Yeah, we can I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you my I, answer. I, I can't. I, yeah, I, don't shoot, I will straight up say, as of right now, without like with the back catalog in my head of all Christopher Nolan movies, I think this might be his worst movie. Now that's saying something because it's still a good movie, mm-hmm. and that speaks volumes for him as a director. But as of right now, I would tell people, yes, I think this might be his worst movie. Okay. Well, then I'll go ahead and answer. And I like your smile. I know you're trying to put me on blast for this. I don't know what I'm you're... Just, I, no, I respect your opinion. Yeah. I, I, you know... I don't have a... We know you really like Christopher well, Nolan, I, so I mean... So his... I, I saw it a long time ago. Following was the first movie that Christopher Nolan ever did. It was his independent one. It's how he got funding for Memento. And that one's okay. It's fine. It's not great. It's him still kind of like finding his form. So out of all the ones that I've watched, I would I probably enjoy that one the least. Um, Insomnia is pretty good. I feel like for what it was, Insomnia was pretty good. But I, I just felt like Batman missed more than any other movie. I feel like there were things about Batman that were some of the best stuff he's done. But overall as a film, I felt like he missed in more spots than anything else he's missed. See, I just think uh, yeah. it's really hard to talk about this movie. Like, I don't even know how I would answer that question. Because <laughs> I, I feel like I, I feel like it's it. really hard to talk about The Dark Knight Rises um, as a film by itself because of how it fits into the right. trilogy. That's yeah. true, and th- he hasn't really made any other trilogies, so I don't right. really know how to talk about it. But trilogies, usually the third movie sucks, like yeah. all the time. Right. So it's like, this movie didn't suck. Right. So it's just hard for me to say, like, I don't know. It just plays into a lot of the things. You have to cover a lot of ground. He introduced a crap load of different characters. Right. So it's it's kind of weird, I guess, where that yep. would stand. Yeah. I, I would say, uh, just as far as the standard he'd set for himself, as far as themes and storytelling, I think that he fell the furthest with this movie. That's fair. And that's why I asked you in particular, because <laughs> okay. you have the most knowledge of all of yeah. Chris Nolan movies out of everyone sitting at this table. That's have you all seen... You haven't seen. Have you seen? I've seen. I've seen a good bit of them, but not. Yeah, I saw Insomnia, and though that 
you just reminded me that Insomnia was a movie, so maybe right. that might be his worst movie, <laughs> honestly. Because <laughs> I didn't remember that that was ever a thing. So let's talk about some characters. All right, so yeah, we're going to start off with the characters. Uh, first of all, we'll probably start off with... Well, we're not going to probably start. Let's start off with Bane. I think going into this movie, that was one of the things that most people were... Bane. How's Bane going to do? How's it's Tom Heath Hardy going to do? So how does this work? Right, you know, what are we like do now? yeah, right. So, um, yeah, let's start. Let's start with Bane, and who who wants to? Andrew, Andrew, you start. You I'll start with Bane. I want to know. I want to know how did you feel about just Bane's overall portrayal or Tom Hardy's portrayal of Bane? I loved it. I loved every single line, even though I couldn't understand a few. <laughs> 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 I still I couldn't stop watching him. Like out of all the what villains, does he sound like? <laughs> your punishment must be more severe. <laughs> so, there, you've, got, um, you've had your one. Okay, that's my one. We've one, each allotted one, ourselves. <laughs> Neil won't partake because Neil doesn't believe in fun. But <laughs> everyone else has allotted themselves one. Plus, Neil can't, plus Neil can't do it. Right. So, but but no, dude. Like out of all the villains in all three of those movies, he scared me the most. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that he was creepy. He, like he had the unsettling. He, he's, he's scared, wanted, like he scared. Me. He was yeah. a terrifying villain. Yeah. He, the, and, the Joker was just fun to watch. Like, yeah, like, see, and that, I want the Joker to win. Honestly, well, that, that's the like, thing. Oh, the, the Joker, Joker is crazy as the Joker is. There's still a fun element to him. Yes. There was no fun There's element no to Bane. Fun. You have a plan, Bane will just stomp your and, plan and, in the face. And, and Tom Hardy just did a, such a good job with like the 10, oh. 15% of his face that he was able to oh, use. Yeah. And I, somehow his like, character was just a like, great I, white shark. And I, I, let, me, let, me, let me say this, and this is, this, is a, this is a heavy statement that I'm going to make. I thought Tom Hardy did so well that if someone, regardless of what you think of the movie, regardless, you know, there are a lot of things that Tom Hardy, you know, how the audio came across, the audio mm-hmm. filter, the fight, none of that has to do with Tom Hardy. He right. had no control of that. What he had control over was his face, his facial features, and of course how he said it and then how they amplified it. And so given that, if someone were to tell me that they thought Tom Hardy did a bad job, I would probably stop talking to them about the movie <laughs> yeah, he, right there. Yeah, he was just he was just really brooding and just, I don't know, he just he What just he said good. with his eyes, and yeah, that moment yeah. where he, you know, there's the one moment where, and I forget the character's name, where he tells him something and he just, he That's just, he dang. says, I'm in control, dang, dang it. it. And he he just sets his hand and on his shoulder. And just leaves it on his shoulder Dude. for a while. That was powerful. And yeah. he, he, he follows it up with, do you feel in control? But he didn't, he didn't, and I thought it was fine, but as soon as he put that hand on the shoulder, you're just like, Oh. It wasn't even his hand. It was like part of his pinky. I'm like, <laughs> and that scares me. Yeah, I feel like so he, he was just—he was just not only just physically threatening, oh. but just everything he said. He had like this Shakespearean way of the way he was yeah. speaking and everything, and it just was—it like, was, was just horrible. The way that he delivered the shadow lines. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then his his face just remained so calm. Every yeah. Time. I'm just like, and, that is so except scary. till the end when I thought he appropriately got right. that look of like. Oh, Batman's back, Uh-oh. right? And that look right. of confusion of I broke you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and and I, and I think um, that scene where he uh, the first scene when he beats the living crap out of Batman just really like it was just a depressing scene, and they're doing it in front of you know not just Catwoman uh, but also in front of all the thugs, like all these normal oh. guys who are watching while they're just while he, Bane is just making Batman look like nothing. He's just yes. throwing him around like a rag doll, just beating the shit out of him. That it's dark and it's like he doesn't even care. And then at the end of that he blows open Batman's armor. I'm like, no! Yeah, what are you doing? Like, he has the, he, he's he just has like the tumbler. Yeah, he's just all over the place, just running all God. over Batman. They just did that so well where you felt like just felt threatened when he was there. I like uh, the fact there was like no music in that scene. Yeah, no. It was just, just punch. Just, and and whenever punch. he's walking the scene where he's walking up to the stadium, oh. it's mute. They have him going over the walkie, like the thing, and he just, and then I love the line. I love the line when the kid's singing. He says, what a lovely, lovely, lovely voice. voice. And it's kind of, the first time I kind of chuckled. The second time I watched it, it scared the hell out of me. Yeah, and, and, and the way they the way they had that lovely juxtaposition lovely of like the Star Spangled Banner and like Bane walking up and all the stuff you already felt about Bane's character. That was just a really good, I like that scene a lot. Like that was pretty Well, he's like, here's character. what I'm doing. These are the things, I'm blowing up a football field. I'm just walking up. I'm complimenting this kid's voice. <laughs> I'm about to blow open a football field mm-hmm. and, and make these people succumb to nuclear repression. Like, and he's just cool. He's calm. Yeah, every, everything he just, was so calculated. Like the way he did everything, he was he was not only stronger than Batman, more physically fit than Batman, but he was smarter in every way than Batman. Right. And they showed that throughout the whole entire right. movie. Right. And I yeah. Uh, yeah, like he uh, just just a phenomenal. So, phenomenal so his voice. Him. I mean, did, you, did that bother all of you, or did you feel like it wasn't really a big deal? Or um, okay, so I don't think so much. 
the problem lies within his voice itself. Mm. I liked his voice. Yeah, it sounded like a prison muffled speaker system when he was I, talking. The issue, like I think, um, that was hard for us to like understand what he was saying sometimes is we can't see his mouth move. Yep. And that's a big part of communication. Yeah. You know, like you kind of miss something, but you can tell by the way someone's like, you know, speaking or things like that. You can kind of see what they're saying and you can't have that at all. And there were scenes where it was just right on him and it was like a, like a three minute shot and he's just talking and talking and I'm like, you can miss a lot because it's just him like moving his eyes and stuff. And it's, Something almost like Power Rangery about it. Yeah, like no, I, agree. Uh, and... yeah. I I think for me, like I love I loved the way that he enunciated, the way that he spoke, mm-hmm. just the the dialect that he used, and I didn't mind the filter so much. I do believe that some parts it was garbled, and there's a, there's something he tells Batman at the end that I was like, that's important. I want to hear it. I think what bothered me the most, and it stuck out in the plane and in the sewer more than anything else, is that. His voice did not sound like it was in that plane. Like you have the plane going, he's got a mask over his face, he's got a he's got a he's got a bag over his face, the plane doors open, there's always yeah. but somehow Bane's you, voice is louder yeah, think, than everything you can tell else. It was dumb. And yeah, right. yeah, right. And it, it that jarred me a little bit. And that well, I think bothered if you me. If anything to that, then you really couldn't have understood what he said. Yeah, but right. honestly, Bane's voice didn't bother me <laughs> no. any more than Christian Bale's voice as Batman that's, bothers that's me. That's a fair <laughs> So <laughs> really, <laughs> honestly. But since I Batman think, wasn't really in this movie, I mean, right, yeah, yeah, whatever, right? Point taken. <laughs> point taken. No, I, I agree. And I just. Yeah, and I thought I loved the fact that Nolan reclaimed. But, you know, whenever first people first saw him, be like, well, hold on a second. He's not this big, monstrous, whatever. Like, but he's a, he's who he was supposed to be. And yeah, in the comics, he's more swole. Right. But I feel like as far as Nolan's interpretation of what fits into whatever he was doing, I thought physically the way that Bane looked was appropriate. He was still huge. Yeah, and yeah. I, feel like, I feel like Nolan does a really good job, not just with Bane, but with all the characters, especially in this film, of just mix-matching a lot of different of the comic book iterations of these villains and these right. characters into, mm-hmm. like, his own version that fits thematically with how his movie is. Mm-hmm. And he did that with Bane and with Catwoman and with even the Joker. He did that really well with mixing them. And, and Bane, Hardy did. Right, it, right, right. All of them. And Bane fit that really well, too. So, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed Bane. And I, and I like how he was everything the Joker Joker wasn't like he had a plan right. for everything he wasn't just crazy mm-hmm. he was everything the Joker wasn't and I'm so glad that Nolan and them stuck with putting him in it instead of following the executives and putting someone like the Riddler into this movie so I'm, right. I'm glad they did at, that. played by Eddie Murphy Jesus yeah, or oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they said Eddie Murphy they were talking about Leonardo DiCaprio I, I wouldn't give a shit I didn't want any Riddler in this no, movie because it would have been the same, same thing, thing all over again. same yeah. thing um, alright any, any other comments on Bane no, I just want to say I like how Nolan can make his villains as scary as possible while keeping them as realistic as possible. I, mean, that, I think that that in this that whole movie is just very grounded. He does a really yes. good job of keeping everything really grounded, even though it's like these over the top characters. Everything still seems oddly plausible yeah. and uh, real, which fits Batman. No, I, I really do. Overall, he doesn't even overuse his CG a lot of times. He makes everything. Now, now he does very, it, and that's something I would like very to bring grounded. Up. Yeah, but uh, we, yeah, we'll definitely get into that. But um, he's still, but Bane. It's still not the best character in this movie, so that's fine. I, 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 I would agree. So, so. Oh, all right, so, so I, I really hope uh, that we all think this. So moving on, I think Josh is going to be a negative douche on this, but we can go. What do so, you mean be a negative? No, let's go. Let's yeah. talk about someone else other than Bane. Okay, all right. Let's next talk about up. everyone's least favorite character, Batman. In yeah, this movie. Batman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. So is it Batman's <laughs> least favorite? Wait, is Batman your least favorite, or is it Bruce Wayne is your least favorite? Because Bruce both Wayne. Of them, Bruce Wayne's actually in the movie about ninety percent more than Batman is yeah, anyway. Is. You know, I still think it's kind of Batman, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all catch the scene where Batman actually does the Batman voice when no one's around at all? Yeah. Well, when when they, Catwoman disappears. Yes. yes thank you. <laughs> I was like, I brought that up. Talking like and that. He does. He does it unnecessarily. Yeah. He Although it was a funny it. scene, but yeah. He also does it when everyone around him knows no. who he is. Right. Well, that would have been at any point in time since everyone in this movie knew who Batman yeah, was. He was like... a relevant character. <laughs> did you, oh, did you like the scene where Batman used his cape to fly? Oh, wait a second. He, he didn't. <laughs> but we'll get, we're, we're getting off track. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right, no, so but, next one. We, next... Do you want to talk about Batman? We can talk let's, about Batman. Yeah, let's, let's just talk, talk about Batman. Batman. So, let's talk about him. So I honestly, I honestly. Should take two minutes. Um, yeah, I like, I like, I like when they first showed Batman, the scene when they were, um, 
in that underground really wide tunnel thing that right, they were right. under. Uh, and he was like, he just peered out, like the light started flickering and Batman yeah. appeared. I, I love the little nice. quip that the cop gave. Right. Yeah. I thought that was really the one, the one about what, which could be Oh, son, you're in for a ride yeah, yeah. tonight. Yeah, I yeah, love the way they did that because it kind of played into the whole him being Which weird that while. people are, there are people in the police force who don't know who Batman is. Right, 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 right. Or know of him, but they'd never but see him. But he's been gone for eight years. I mean, you can see there's new people who maybe not... Yeah. People right, think but it's, it's an like interesting man. dynamic yeah, there. Yeah, and I thought that was done really well, but um, yeah, I mean... It's it's like at that point he shows up and he's like, like he's actually badass at this point. Yeah. Like, he's the Batman that everybody... He's dark in the shadows, like knocking out the lights and stuff. That's what people like about Batman. And I think after that... There was nothing cool, like, Batman-y about him. Yeah, well, Batman he, just got beat the shit for the rest of the movie. Right, but, <laughs> That's he, he yeah, yeah. but he didn't do cool Batman stuff. Like, no. he didn't, like, hang from rafters and, like, tie people up and, like, no, he punch did not. people. He did up, that like, cool from, scene uh, during when they're... So it was him and Catwoman. During that, like, no, during that, oh, yeah, um, you, know that you know the bank, or not the bank, the, um, the, the stock market? The stock market scene. So when they're leaving that scene, he's chasing all the guys on the bike. Right. He does a cool thing at the end where he, like, sends his bike to go, like, on autopilot, mm -hmm. and he grabs the guy off, from, and yeah, he grabs right, the hostage yeah. off. Yeah. I thought that was pretty neat. But, yeah, there weren't really a lot of, like, even the Batman gadgets... Other than that, yeah, the, bat, the bat, the copter. That, by the way, I hated and that thought was, was really okay, dumb. So the bat, the that that's vehicle. Like, we can talk about the bat. Was a bigger character and did more in that movie than Batman, Batman did. Yeah, and I realized they had it the step. They, had, point than they had to step it up. Like they had the first, they had the Batmobile. Then they had his little bike that they had, and then they were like trying to like get on top of that with yeah, the whole. The bat copter. But the bat copter thing just it didn't do anything for me. No, I, I now I do thought you know I don't thought. In the Dark Knight, there was a phenomenal scene whenever he's on the street with the Joker and he uses that motorcycle mm. and he flips up. Mm. And I think I, everyone was like, that looks great. And so all the scenes in this movie where they used it, especially with Catwoman mm -hmm. at the end where she, who, uh, all, she's, all, excuse me, excuse me, Selena Kyle. Yes. At the yes. end with, that, <laughs> all, that all was those, great. All those scenes, and in fact, when she was on it, it was a lot cooler than when he was oh, on it. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. they did a really good job making all those, they were even shot really nice. Like They always right. looked really cool. Like there was this scene where, um, when Selena Kyle first gets on the motorcycle and she pulls out and it was like getting to be daytime and it just looks mm. really, really, really nice. Yeah, okay, I really like that. Um, so yeah, but I, I just felt like Bruce Wayne was... A dick? <laughs> he was a dick. He was a crybaby. Like... Wait, wait, wait. Batman Defense Force, Andrew wants no, no, to no, say no. something. No, I'm saying Bruce Wayne was kind of a dick in the Batman Yeah, but, he, but he was just but like... He's a, he's, a, like, he's a dick on purpose. Yeah. But what is this like... And, and I guess characters and script are kind of intertwined you know we come into the movie and batman's been moping around for eight years and it's like what are you doing okay she died so i'm so i'm yeah, like i'm sad and it's like man uh, up, dude. Like, i don't get it and the then way, and then by the way i slightly vomited when i saw rachel's picture when they first started showing it because i'm really <laughs> hoping i wouldn't have to see her again in this movie but yeah well you know there was that and that Batman, the Bruce Wayne was sad, and then all of a sudden, you know, he gets some <laughs> inspirational speech, and then he's like, "I'm gonna go be Batman again," and then he gets beat up, and, and he had then that really, really good knee brace that let him kick through a brick wall. Kick yeah. through a brick wall, yeah. yes. Like, why oh, did he use that more? That's a better gadget than anything he has. Yeah, why don't you just kick Bane you can with that? Kick through walls now. <laughs> Bane. That's Bane. now your superpower. I, I, yeah, I really didn't like a lot of. Uh, just Christian Bale. I feel like overall Christian Bale was the thing I liked the least about this movie. And I don't um, think it was how Christian Bale portrayed him. No, I think I, it was just written. Yeah, there wasn't really a lot for him to do. Yeah. I felt like he did. I mean, I guess if he was supposed to be broken and kind of down, I guess that worked. Right. But I mean, I just, I just, yeah, I, I wasn't really. Yeah, that, yeah none of that. And then and even when he comes back, it's like. I'm, it, it wasn't even coming back as Batman. It's like, I'm William Wallace. And I'm like, it's just like... Uh, I, I, I don't all know. Right, let's talk about a good character. Okay, all right. Okay. So yeah. next up, I would I would say Selena Kyle. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's, let's go talk, there. Uh, uh, I thought... If you, if you shit on Selena Kyle, I'm going to slap you. No, 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 no. I thought that Catwoman was, or Selena Kyle, because did they That's ever call her Catwoman? No, they, they did purposely. And I love that, I love that little, that little say. troll wait, yeah, he wait, did there. Wait, wait, wait. and her, her goggles that flip up and make yeah, cat ears exactly. is completely adorable. Absolute yeah, troll. Good. Absolute troll. I thought, I thought yeah, that was no, an no, excellent, it. like, costume design. Well, yeah, I, I really, like, because you know, before this movie, like, so many people were like, including myself, were like, uh, Anne Hathaway, I don't know about her as a Catwoman. I mean, I might have saw Princess Diaries like five times, but I don't know if she could be a good Catwoman. But Anne after, Hathaway yeah, but she did, she up. was like super sexy during the movie. She had the whole like mm -hmm. elegant, but like, I don't know, like the way she walked, everything yeah, was just She had perfect. it down. When they, intro was... when they introduced her as uh, they did the, the scene as being the maid, the maid. Mm -hmm. in that split moment when he talks about the necklace and points it out, and she does like a Changes. complete yeah. turnaround, yeah. and you can just see it yes. the way she talks. Yes, 
It was so good. So mm-hmm. good. So I good. yeah, I, I, I agree. I thought she played her phenomenally. And my issue with Cat sorry, Selena Kyle was the same issue that I had with Bane was that in the first act, they were you know, that he was doing a lot of stuff with them. They were inter- they were growing, it was interesting. And then I felt uh, really my none of my issues with the characters had to do with how they played them. Right. I just I guess I felt like how he and at the end when she just uh, I would say that there wasn't enough of Catwoman in the movie altogether. Um, I just I, I right. thought that she because I feel like mm-hmm. any scene she was in, she stole that scene multiple times. I thought her and Bruce Wayne had good chemistry. They did, you know, right. and I, some people I know, like Adam Arinder and other people I know, said that they blatantly <laughs> did not think they had any chemistry at all. And I I don't see that at all. Like I felt like the whole time that they really did, and uh, and just the way the way she blatantly um, just. I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked everything about her. I, 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 body language is what I was thinking of. Her yeah, body language was she good, perfect. Oh, that ass <laughs> on the bike. I know it wasn't even her. It was a stunt double, but man. No, nah, she did a lot of her stunts. I, now, yeah, the she, scene, I love the scene whenever she rolls out of the window with Daggett, hits the, the window cleaner, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then she kicks it with her leg. But I, I think it was more the camera shot of her just standing Still there. there all, with this, the gun. all those like high kicks she was doing and these fancy kicks was like really good Catwoman stuff. They didn't feel right. the need to like do this. Well, and then when she, cl- when, she climbed, like when she climbed out of the window and, yeah, and when she, she, trained, she trained for a lot of that. Right, and yeah. she went into that movie knowing that she was going to have to do a lot of it. Yeah. But again, like I said, like, I just don't feel like by the time the movie it started off, her character started for the pod. The, by the time the movie was done, I felt like he just kind of pilfered out her character. Yeah, I, like, I feel like she owned the role altogether as Catwoman, but I agree that like the more as the movie went on, there were just less and less scenes where she was able to even do anything in the movie. So right. I would have liked to have seen her try and break out of that jail cell that she was in. I mean, I thought it was kind of cool the so way just, they did it in there with a the little little cartwheel and stuff like that, yeah. breaking the guy's hand. And I really where liked, the guy's hands didn't twist at all. I, I mean, it was probably my favorite scene in the movie, but like I liked the. Um, acting even without her having to say anything when Bane was beating the shit out of Batman oh, her that watching good, yeah. that was so good showing that like she, yeah, she, she like she like has these mixed emotions in the movie like he didn't Nolan didn't make her the completely batshit crazy Catwoman from Batman mm-hmm. Returns right. but he like kind of he, he had her switching back and forth in emotions and I just like the way they did that and I mean the, the scene when they're in the restaurant and she does the whole little screaming like a like yes. I'm gonna be a chick who's just gonna yell and scream because I'm scared and the cops and she just shuts it off just like right. that shuts off and walks out. Yeah, she did very good job of on and off, on and off with yeah. with and her And that's not easy to do. So right, I mean, yeah. I I didn't like how these random like I just you know especially at the end with these random moments of like love infatuation with with Batman and Bruce Wayne. I didn't I didn't why he's a billionaire superhero. But I just <laughs> I didn't I get I get it when the way that like that's how she comes on to men. That's her thing. So at the beginning, <laughs> I get that. But at the end whenever she's like, you know, you Batman, you don't you don't owe them anything and it's like I don't I haven't gotten that far with your character. But I don't yet. even think she, I don't, I don't even don't think she's that. I don't even think it's like that. I think she was also projecting some of herself when she's talk, mm-hmm. saying things like that. Right. But I I didn't I, I don't there feel like Nolan wasn't... took me to that point well, with that there, character. That's because there wasn't enough time to develop like well there wasn't enough time. There wasn't a good use of the time. Oh, there was like, a, that was what you're saying. There's quite a bit of time, time, time in this movie. I don't I don't feel like the script allowed the script um gave enough of the characters enough time for development. And I don't right. even know that it was maybe too many characters, but there was a lot of time wasted on, hey, we're gonna have these Batmobiles driving around a city in the snow Let's, instead of maybe talking more about uh, it. I, I, I'm, so, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna avoid on. the soapbox real quick and yeah. I Andrew, what you haven't had a Uh well, I don't know. I like Catwoman. We all said everything. And and Hathaway did a good. I have nothing else to say about Catwoman. I now, liked her. since we're on the subject of Catwoman, how about we go oh, to Catman's, uh, Cat- Selena Cat- Kyle's. Like excuse me, Selena oh, Kyle's Catman. Random, <laughs> random blonde. Oh, that was no. That's in the comics. She's, yeah, she's, she's, she's always had a friend. Here, and they, and they, they they played it. They played it in some of the newer comics back and forth about like what that really is. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like I, they I, I get it. it was but what was? Theme. But like, I. I don't know what the character's name is. Juno Temple is the actress's yeah. name, but I, I get why she was in the beginning. That's fine. But then they had the. I don't think I was the only one that thought this, but there was the scene where Catwoman, the the obligatory, oh, we need to return to Catwoman scene. If you're talking and about she, the thing you're talking about, that was purposely done. It was just supposed to be ambiguous, just because it, it, it is. Yeah. That, that sexual yeah, undertone. Yeah, that's of supposed it. to be that provocative, just like uh, that's like a thing. So. But I guess I felt it was strange because it's like, okay, it's here. Okay, that's a that, there's some sexual undertones in that mm-hmm. scene. Then we never see that girl again, and I just felt like, what was the point of that scene? Why do we need to know that? 
provocative. I just I feel like we need a girl to talk about. This. No, I feel like it was just it was just a provocative thing. I think they were just doing but, it but, to be provocative. But I just didn't. I didn't feel like that scene. Just that scene by itself. I'm sure it thought it was a random. But that might have worked for a lot of people who were watching that movie. So maybe you just. That's fine. I just I just felt like that scene was. I feel like that. I feel like that was an obligatory. We need to refer to Catwoman scene. Oh, I know. Let's go ahead and refer to this. And but I just I felt like that scene was out of place. And I I feel like that character was. Useless. I get it. She was in the comics. She's in a bunch of. I mean, she's in a bunch. But of as far as the script of the film, I just thought that was a useless character. Like, if you're putting things on the chopping block, that very much could have been something I thought you could have put on the chopping film, block. I, I think. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. Anybody have anything else that <sighs> about? I haven't. I mean, not about, about Selena her, Kyle. No. All right. Uh, who do you want next? Uh, was John Blake? We can talk about him. Um, that's my favorite character in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's Joseph Gordon-Levitt running around with a shotgun fighting crime. <laughs> Look, let's just take Batman out of the movie and make him the main Sorry. character, and I want to watch that instead. I want him yeah. to fight Bane with a shotgun. That's what I want to see. I thought Joseph Gordon-Levitt played a very cool character, yeah. even if the end it's like, surprise, now I'm Robin. Right. But I don't, I don't care because I liked him. I liked his scenes. I liked everything he did with that character, and I liked that character overall. Yeah. And like Anne Hathaway and Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I thought did an awesome job. Mm -hmm. um, I, I couldn't. I know he tried to do some sort of East Side accent, but I don't. I, it didn't distract me. So he's one of the boys. <laughs> one of the boys. All right, Neil. Since I, you're about to. Oh no no! I, I mean, I actually really liked him in the movie. I felt like he just completely replaced Gordon as like that type of you know completely good right. cop character because mm -hmm. Gordon because Gordon was kind of reduced to like I'm in the hospital bed for yeah. right, forty percent right. of the movie and he was able to He's run around be a young kid shit. doing all this stuff and I mean I, I liked it and I didn't I did, really didn't mind the whole like Robin nod no. they did at the end without no, it being was... like stupid Robin from the comic book cheesy sidekick because exactly. I'm glad they didn't do that I didn't need yeah. a Robin sidekick well it's movie. like my, my friend Charlie pointed out he's like I think it was a funny joke people are like well his name's not Robin in the comic it's a joke it's mm -hmm. a troll it's a joke by Nolan and he's not making another movie so what do you yeah. care yeah. yeah yeah. you know like that's it it's yeah. done he's passing exactly. the torch yeah and it was a nice nod I, I mean I don't think right. anyone was like oh no it was a like joke it. it was what it was it was a joke <laughs> like let's go um, did you have anything else you wanted to Oh no, no, no! I am I am actually with John Michael in that he was, in my opinion, I mean Bane was a more dynamic character, right, so right. he was interesting. But as far as the character that I was the most interested watching his story arc progress, it was him mm -hmm. because I felt like number one because yes, like him running with a shotgun, yeah. I love that. I thought that was a great scene. I thought that. I think one of the things is we knew so he's just to us like this random character, and we're like. How is Christopher Nolan fitting this guy into the Batman universe? Yeah. What is he doing with this guy? And I think that's what I loved about it the most. I wanted to see what why he they was kept, doing. Why they were focusing so yes. much on him. Yeah. Why he is important. And I liked that. I liked the mystery behind it. I liked um, just like, because his character was so cool. I'm like, I want him to be a superhero of some sort. Like, let him be something cool in this movie. He made it seem more of like a, a movie based off of one of the old school detective comics than yeah. it was, yeah. you know, yeah. Batman. And, and, and I like how he he was not, I don't want to say innocent, but he was definitely young in his ideals of, of justice and how to handle mm -hmm. things like that. And I think that in a movie where the characters were so dark and shambled and broken, having him that kind of defiant, no, this is good, this is bad, I thought that was a good juxtaposition to things that were going on, especially yeah. at the end, whenever he, whenever he's telling the the father, the priest, to be like, "Shut up," <laughs> you know. I guess like, I guess the only thing I didn't like about his character, and it was it's it's I guess less about his character than just the whole way some of the things in the movie were written that we'll probably get in our second segment. Oh, we will definitely is, get into. Is just the segment. fact like when they first introduce him, um, when he first talks to Bruce Wayne, and he like knows that he's Batman. Yeah. yeah. That, that whole thing right there just set that present in, presence in the movie that I just had a problem with. So that yeah. so that, that was really about it though. Yep. Yep, I, I agree. That was. <laughs> I, I like that scene after all the explosions whenever his car flips upside down and he first gets the shotgun. He walks up to the guy in the car. He says, sir, are you all right? He says, all right, get out of the car. I'm a police officer. Like, right after you had, I don't know. I, I really like that because it was just a complete flip. Yeah, I, I mean. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, I was just, I was because, and I felt like more happened. I feel like his character went through a more, in, like, went from point he went through an entire arc in that right. film i feel like he as a character he's changed. actually the only one right <laughs> right that yeah. that changed yeah. at, at the beginning he's like you know i'm a police officer you know i'm a detective and at the end he chunks the badge yeah yeah and i just 
For and it me. all seemed natural. Like it didn't right, seem right, like they right. were jumping too much. Which is character. why I didn't mind the the going into the Batcave thing because no. I felt like it was a natural progression of the story. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which was one of the only things in the film that I thought was a natural progression of the story. But again, <laughs> we'll get into that one after the break. Um, anybody have anything else they want to? Okay. Any other characters? I mean, mm-hmm. what? I mean, I, I thought Tate. I thought the oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's start with Miranda Tate. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about her. Yeah. Oh, oh, silly so. me. <laughs> Silly me, they introduced this mysterious character at the beginning of the movie. I yeah. bet she doesn't play it violently. Plot device. <laughs> yeah, when like you, yeah, the in like mystery device. or horror movies, when you introduce yeah. this character that has no like, other meaning right. in the plot, like, like Scooby Doo, like, you're pretty sure she's the killer or something bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I, I don't, I don't like that as mm-hmm. a thing. But I feel like she played the role fine, and I, yeah. and I don't. Like I said, I've said this before about Batman Begins. I don't like the whole League of Shadows, League of Assassins idea in general but i feel like nolan's use of it in batman begins and tying that into um the dark knight rises Mm. using her makes sense to me um but as we'll talk about later i feel like in the way they used her undermined uh how they were building up bane for the entire movie yeah so right and i i actually i mean i liked her character i the twist the twist at the end i assumed it was coming so whenever he's beating bane and he's asking who's the trigger despite how he was saying who's the trigger i was like i was kind of like smugs i'm like she's the trick like you know and then she stabs him and i thought the way that she she he's like but you know gotham gotham she looked at him she's like yeah yeah i get it but i'm still gonna blow up gotham and i thought that the way that she portrayed that was very very well done except for the final scene where she's dying and she <laughs> says something God. something and then she just kind of cocks her head to the side and closes her eyes and i was like no, that it dying like that yeah it was a horrible death scene <laughs> not her being cramped up in the car because when i saw her in the car i was like oh that looks painful it's whenever she actually like cocked her head to death i was like oh that's really bad that's probably how she kills herself I'm telling you, you Maybe. She broke her neck. She but I, I, I liked Moran. You know, I thought he did a good... I assumed always who she was, but I felt like she played someone who... I thought she played it well enough that, oh, I could trust this person. This so is see, someone so who see, I could trust. I went into this movie, like, I don't watch previews. I don't read early reviews or anything like that. So I didn't have any idea why she was in this movie from the very beginning. Well, I just assumed based right. on the... Well, and, and like I said, my, my history with Batman is kind of back and forth. So I just... I don't know. I didn't really see it coming until... The more and more I started thinking, why is she in this movie? Why is she in this movie? And then they had a couple of scenes where it made me really wonder. And then they showed that scene where she's up there with Bane. That's the one I kept. That was the one. She's looking down while they're fighting, and she's not. She doesn't have a scared look on her face. Doesn't mean she's just looking down. And that's when I'm like, oh. And if you watch on the pan out, she's actually changed to her her robe. But I didn't know this that the first time. But that's whenever I knew. I'm like, yep. See, Mm -hmm. whenever. Like, after they do it, and they're, like, by the fire, <laughs> and they have this, like, obligatory scene where he, like, puts his hand and, like, touches a scar on her back. I'm like, mm, it's Talia al Ghul. Talia al Ghul, guys. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Like, that's true. You don't that's shout that out in the movie theater. Cause but, I, I mean, I liked, I thought she did a good job. Yeah. I thought, I thought you could yeah. trust her when you needed to trust her, and then it, you thought, I thought she meant business whenever it's time for her to mean business. Again, so. overall, before we wrap up this whole character thing, I, I think that the whole movie, again, was very well cast. Like, oh, I didn't yeah. have a problem with anybody. Oh, really no. Casting. Especially, like, the random cameos yeah. of people, yeah. like, oh, yeah, they, uh, the doctor, what's his name? Wait, wait, wait. The, the knee doctor from Reno 911. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 remember, he usually plays a gay guy. He's funny. And then they had the, they had the Scarecrow cameo Thomas thing Lennon, in there, too, yeah. which was okay. good. I didn't like the Scarecrow cameo just because I, did, I thought the scene was... I, but we'll get into it. Well, okay... I, I kind of I liked the th- the cameo. I just didn't I like the was, cameo. I didn't think he was playing the scarecrow there. I think he was playing just Crane, just, just like yeah. a crazy doctor. Yeah, that yeah. I mean, he knows people yeah. psychologically. But I would have liked to see like an actual scarecrow. Cameo, yeah, I guess he could have done that you know, with the mask on. There was a mask on. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I and then there's just random people that I recognize, like the military guy who approaches the mercenary on the beard, mm-hmm. on the beard, on the bridge. <laughs> Um, oh man, I got it. You've been drinking too much beer. Yeah, half a half a half a half a glass. But um, he I recognized him from the wire. The the cop on the bridge at the end yeah. was from Dexter. Yes. They were just random. They were just random characters. I'm like, oh, I recognize that guy. Like I recognize that lady. You know, I know. See, I, um, I, yes, I don't think no. I don't think anyone in the movie. I was like, man, I really wish they weren't in the movie because <laughs> no. that was crappy. Yeah. Now do you. Now I thought, even though he was only in it a little bit, I thought Michael Caine emotionally. Oh yeah, and the scene where he was revealing to Bruce Wayne what he'd done, yeah. and at the end where he felt like not the final scene, but the end where he was at the gravesite and he was crying yeah. because he thought he felt Bruce Wayne, regardless of 
of how disappointed I was with the movie or whatever, those scenes, I thought there was more emotion in those scenes and like his breaking up and his crying than honestly really anything else I've I've seen this year. I thought those were great scenes. I thought he did a good... Yeah, it's because it's Michael Caine. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> he did a good job. And I thought... I mean, I think Christian Bale did a good job whenever he was getting revealed about the letter. I mean, his face was yeah. completely covered in the shadows, and yeah, I, that I was, couldn't tell. Right. me to shake your hand. And I was like, what is Alfred? Shake his hand. I yeah, was so I was just... Yeah, that was... Oh. He, he did a good job. I mean, Morgan Freeman's character was... I feel like by obligation he was in there. Yeah. I mean, you, and, yeah. and he's Morgan Freeman. I mean, yeah, he does what yeah. he does. Yeah, he's, he's like he's just cute. Kind of so I don't really know. Like like That's him. all he is. Like, he, yeah, he can't do a bad job acting. I mean, and he's funny. You know, he does that. He kind of looks at Bruce Wayne with that mischievous yeah. look, and he's like, yeah. "Well, let me show you something anyway." That was a good. That was know? a good line. The way they yeah. did that. That was that was clever. Yeah. And I, I really like the part where he has the board member on the ground and he's about to mm. shoot him and he's like, no, I'm not helping you. And it was just so, I, I'm like, I, he's like, I don't care that you're about to shoot this guy. And I love that. I thought that was, I thought that was very appropriately yeah. him. Freeman's a badass. Him. Um, is there any other characters? Uh, should we run into anything else? We'll just throw it in there. About How about Liam Neeson? Didn't he do great in the single scene that he was in? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's when he like, <laughs> ghost Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be continued. Um, all right, so right now we are going to take a pause, and we will get back to you after the break. All right, everyone, uh, welcome back to after the break. All right, so we just talked about all the characters, so... Obviously, you heard that if you at this point. So now we're going to get more into the movie itself, the script, the the different elements of the film, and uh, you know, I think this is going to be fun. So, who wants to chime in first <laughs> with I don't know anything? I think Andrew should go first. Free for I all battle script, royale. That script should be nominated for best <laughs> screenplay of the year. Are you trolling? I can't uh, tell if you're being serious. I don't know if it's that part of the fanboy coming out of me. I really oh, I'm sure we know that's that's part of what's coming out. But. No, there was a lot of problems with that script. <laughs> like what? But, uh, I don't know, too many to list. I can't think of anything. Someone, I don't know, someone say one. Act 2 in its entirety? Yeah, I think Act so, 3, if, if you count the last 10 minutes as Act 3, then that was pretty good. But I feel like the whole, <laughs> the, I feel like the whole middle parts of the movie... Um, Pointless. It wasn't... No, it was. It, it was. Pointless. Yeah. Well, and but but you know, I feel like I, I know we're going to talk about the uh, you know Batman Begins and how the Dark Knight kind of tie in. I feel like when a lot of people said that some of this movie kind of reminded them of Batman Begins, I feel like oh, yeah. a it was intentional because it was you know calling because back a he lot kept to it. he kept giving us the scenes in case. Oh, don't even get me started. Yeah, we'll talk about and that the in bats second. whenever he's climbing right. out of the. But I really didn't like any of that. I didn't like it. I, from when he gets his back broken. And then that whole, his whole, yep. th- I didn't yep. like any of that. And his stuff yep. in the prison, and his, I didn't like any of it. So, I mean, I just thought it was stupid and cheesy. It reminded me of the parts I didn't like about Batman Begins. Let's, how about we talk about one of the biggest problems with the script, and that is he is in the prison. Fast. He has 24 hours to save Gotham City. He is on the other side of no, the globe. No, no, he had two months. Five. So, from, no, no, no. There was no, 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 no. There was three months. Three months. It was five I months. To- he was five months total. Okay, so there's five, five months, months total. Three months until he was able to climb the wall. He climbed mm. when he got out. At the, at the that mark, he got out of the prison. So he had two months. Two months. He is Bruce Wayne. Okay. With he no might money, not be. Though. He might not have any money, but Bruce Wayne still knows people. He still has contacts. Okay. I feel like Bruce Wayne, being Batman, can get the hell out of. He he the, he climbed out and he looks and this the screen pans out oh, and he sees city. the city. So there's city where people are that it's not separated from the whole entire world. So I feel like he could have got I feel like he could have got back into Gotham. Gotham wasn't quarantined. They were letting people in, just not letting people out. I missed this even the second time. Whenever he got out of the prison, he was rolling something up in a blanket. Was it just that was like a surprise. It was just a surprise. That was stuff? that was he's like was I'm, he's like I'm leaving this time. I'm bringing my stuff no matter with what. Me. Yeah, that, that was just that, that's what the show. That was the show. Like, if, because if he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't gonna have a rope. So even if he didn't make the jump, he'd be right. dead. Yeah, he would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I didn't think that was a. I didn't think that was a plot hole. I know that people. Yeah. I, 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 what was, really a, what was a plot hole? The part about him not being able to get back. I, I, I assume not, that to me. Did you? I, no, I, I, I can accept the fact that he can get back in that city. I, uh, I just feel like. Would you? Would you want someone to call and be like him to call and be like, 
hey, this is Bruce Wayne, I need someone to pick me up, and then that scene would no, happen better. No. Wouldn't that be a cool scene, though? So no. You get back in the city, you really... No, no I, I here's, like here, here was my... They need to add another me, 15 minutes to this let, movie. Let me, <laughs> let's, let's put an interesting part in there and take away some of the boring stuff instead. I, <laughs> let me just say, I absolutely am f- hated, hated how we're finally seeing a scene that's relevant to Selena Kyle, and then here's Bruce Wayne standing in the shadows. Because... We have watched so much useless, useless scenes that, that don't advance the plot in any sense at all. You know, I really, you know, if he's in the jail cell, I thought it was important. Do we need to see him falling however many times he fell? No. Two fall three, once. Yeah. Bring him back up. Yeah. Do we need to see Liam Neeson piecing this stuff together him? <laughs> no, we don't need to see that. See, we don't, and I completely hated all the flashbacks in the whole entire movie. I hate that that escape anyway. I hate when people use that. But those movies were a long time ago, and there are a lot of people, like, people who maybe aren't the biggest fans of Batman like that probably forgot all about his character or only saw The Dark Knight and stuff like that. Well, I right. think I whenever like, he brought uh, Rash al Ghul in, it was like, it's... This is kind of my literal version of the ladder, the Lazarus Pit. Yeah. But I was really thinking about it. The scene where the whatever they were, CIA secret agents, people don't need it. Pointless scene. No, that that showed no. That scene shows that one that the United States government didn't actually give up on Gotham. It shows that people could get into the city, which you needed to understand later because Bruce Wayne gets into the city. So but they had to sneak into the city, which I'm pretty sure Batman could do. So, um, but that's my point. That's, possible. that's no, that's that's my point because you Batman. Wanted, you wanted to see that. No, wow. because because Batman climb. Okay, so bat he's you know Bruce Wayne is broken. That's like the big thing. The Dark Knight, Batman has to rise. Whatever it is, so he climbs out of this pit. Great, he's 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 rose. He has his strength back. He's risen. He's risen. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so why is it not? So why is it important to see fifteen scenes of tanks rolling around? Okay. They ain't standing. You know, in the I ba- hate all of the scenes, especially the Batmobiles. Just we don't. We circles. don't need to see the random. I'm sorry. We don't need to see the guy falling from the ice. In fact, we don't need the ice. What was yeah, the point of the ice? Really weird. It's like a lot of people are saying how this whole atmosphere of this movie felt different because one, Gotham was set during the daytime, but it was also Gotham set during the winter, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like the only reason to have this movie set during the winter was just so you could have the whole frozen <laughs> ice. And that, yeah. and that was it, just really stupid it to me. Did like, not I didn't work. like that at all. Uh, and, and, but, then, and then they're walking across it like it's fine later on. Yeah, when, I know. When, Gordon when Batman, who yeah, weighs yeah, more than any like, of them. hey, light it up. I'm good. Uh, and he's lit it on fire uh, with well, oil. Because he took the past like hour and a half to make a bat spot <laughs> on the building. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but here to get to get back to my point so he's risen and this is all great but the thing is you know he, there's a scene earlier where Bruce Wayne gets out of the car everybody immediately recognizes Bruce Wayne so people are going to see Bruce Wayne going back into Gotham Bruce Wayne going back in and w- this I would assume this would this, you know since he can get across what this is his first time where he's really going to have to go back into stealth mode sneak around get around the city and show him and maybe we can show him reconnecting with certain people that way and that way you keep the story focused on him instead of all these random obligatory scenes of tanks and blowing up and random court scenes and ice breaking i really 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 believe that they probably did have that scene in there at some point and for some reason that was the thing that got cut but i agree that i can see where that would have made sense but yeah that that, it's it's it would be instrument my whole problem with the second act was that you know I had kind of, I had issues with the first act, but when I watched it again, I I got I still think that there was a lot going the on. Whole, yeah, yeah, and the, you know, woe is me. I got past that, and I thought, okay, why is Bane? Uh, why is he the the stock market? And I thought that was interesting. And then he's dusting off the fingerprints, and we're going and we're connecting yeah, all that. It's stuff. like a big chess match the whole time, but they don't you don't the payoff isn't until like the very end for a lot of it. He does, yeah, he's he like Bane setting up all these pieces. They're doing all these things, but it all just seems sporadic and random. But when you think about it, they were all for specific reasons, like you said, with the fingerprints, with Catwoman, right, right. But yeah, all that stuff. But then away. all of that is null and void till literally the end of the film. And so we have all these scenes that we really don't need. They don't advance the plot forward. They just, none of it, I just don't feel like any of it matters. And you you could have more scenes of him more sneaking More Catwoman. Ar- more Catwoman. More, maybe him sneaking around a city and be like, hey, what's going on? And saying, us, cops in the basement, cops in the basement, cops here. That was so, and it's like, I felt like he was telling a story, and he just completely just lost track of what he was doing, until at the end, whenever he, which I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't like the Braveheart charge at the end with the cops versus the mercenaries. I kind of, I kind of, 
I, I kind of did. I'm going to say. It, it's the point in, in the movie where uh, Batman has given Gotham back to the people, which is kind of like what he's supposed to be I, doing. I do right. think that Batman's little hovercraft thing that he flew in maybe could have gave a little bit of support instead of just shooting, shooting a single tank. Shooting <laughs> one tank and then leaving. I'm just saying. Because, All right, guys. He right, has this guys, flying you machine. Your pistols, right? Get yeah. The tank. So, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even like a rocket. It was a machine. It was like... Brrr, it was like a little EMP gun. Like, wait, 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 wait. Finish it off at least. But I, I think, I think we should, Why do you shoot Bane with that? I think we should really, though, like, like really rail it back into like at least talking about the beginning of the movie when they had that plane scene, the plane hijacking scene. I, How did you feel about that? I didn't. Okay, so the first of all, I I don't like the ice cracking scene. I don't think we needed the scene to come. Straight. I felt like he should have started on the wide shot of the. That's just that's just me being subjective. I felt like the plane scene because I consider the you know I felt like the first scene in the Dark Knight was a big thing. That I felt like the first scene of the Dark Knight was essentially a flawless scene. I can't think of a I single agree. thing. Uh, yeah. the and there, scene and there the were Dark certain was, things yeah. there were certain things in that scene that required a little bit stretch of imagination like the bus but I was okay because it was set up so well. Whereas this movie didn't do that. So when Batman appears on the I I, I wasn't I wasn't willing to go there, but I feel like the first scene I felt like there were some cool things about it. Like I like how they how they stuck the guy's arm and they transferred I feel the like blood. It was like, man, we learned a lot of cool shit from Inception that we could do these ZOG yes. yep. scenes. Yes, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, exactly we're gonna make this work in a Batman movie. And, and I feel I like visually, I thought it looked really cool. Completely unnecessary to do this whole like hijack this plane like this, and they could have probably right. made that a little easier. But it was a, especially when I saw it at IMAX, it was a really visually stunning scene to watch. Yeah. Well, and and the fact that whenever pe- the people are shooting and climbing into the plane, they were really in the air yeah. doing that. Yeah. Which I'll get to. I like to make a comment on that whole thing towards the end. Mm-hmm. But I I feel like, and then I the CIA agent, I like the guy that plays him. Right, right. Um, Peter Baelish in Game of Thrones. He's in The Wire, so I like him, and I was happy to see him. But that. I just, I just like him. I don't know maybe that. But I, I just feel like I like how they stuck the guy and they transferred his blood. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, obviously that wouldn't work, but I, I went with it for the movie. It was slick. It was slick. It was no slick, but yeah, I felt like the first scene was fairly well, underwhelming for what yeah, it was. Yeah, but I, I still also at the same time think it was a really cool way to introduce Bane. Yeah, I, right. I, I think it showed that he was smart. It, sh- it showed right. all the essence, just like... That in, he was in control. Yeah, just yeah. like in The Dark Knight, where it showed pretty right. much what the Joker was with having a little dialogue about how people were talking about the Joker, mm-hmm. then really mm-hmm. showing the Joker's true character. Um, and in Batman Begins, they did the same thing with Bruce Wayne in a lot of way with Batman. They did a right. lot of that, showing kind of how he was. So I, I like how they've done the introductions. And right. I didn't I didn't feel like it was bad. I feel like just, our expectations were just a little thrown off because of the well, Dark Knight. The, the, the right. first, well, the first scene, like I said, the first scene in the Dark Knight was just like, it's false. I, I couldn't tell you a single it's thing that they should have done differently yeah, about I, that. I, I can't I touch that with anything ever. I agree. Um, now I think that first scene you can parallel. I feel like there's a lot about the Dark Knight you can't hold it up to. But what's he gonna start this movie yeah, with? Yeah. I feel like that was up against. It. And like I said, I feel like his voice, the volume of the voice was mm-hmm. a little jarring. So maybe that's me. And I liked it more the second time. Now I liked it a lot more the second time. Yeah, it was jarring, but it was at the same time it was so unsettling. Cause like right. Yeah. I mean, the hit, the hit, music, Bane's yeah. music. Yes. The mu- the, the score of the whole movie oh, yeah, was so amazing. Very still. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I. Oh, I was just gonna say one of the things that bothered me about like everything is they would they would they they obviously <laughs> just, about everything. <laughs> one of the big problems I have with the movie is they reference Batman Begins and they reference the Dark Knight. Really, I, I could I couldn't tell Batman like, reference Batman Begins so, so they many times. Like, hey, remember this part? Hey, remember this part? But nobody seems to remember. The guy with the white makeup running around blowing up the city? Like, I mean, okay, I, I feel like they should. Not... I feel like they should. I feel like it was smart not to touch that. Really? I, yeah. They yeah. didn't I even have have reference it. At least one line of dialogue. Nope. They should never have referenced that at nope. all. I don't think they needed to do that. It's been eight oh, years, man. and there's probably been other criminals and things running around. Four. I don't feel like they needed. To... Oh, eight years, you're right. I don't think they needed to uh, really address any of that. But supposedly, out like, of respect for Heath Ledger. But yeah, uh, let's respect Heath Ledger. Sure. But at the same time, let we talked about all these other things that happened. Everything I, I else feel that like happened Chris in all, all the other movies. Wanted to distance himself from the Joker and he the, 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 the third Batman, the entire movie was a result of choices made in Batman Begins exactly. and Dark Knight. Exactly. And the Joker uh, had a lot to do with that. But it didn't because it's no. because, because the whole I felt like I felt like Harvey Dent and stuff was I was felt, supposed to be Batman. I felt like so I felt like they the re Gotham I felt like people. I honestly felt like the things that they set up at the end of. The, that this was another problem I guess I had was the end of the Dark Knight where 
they completely like re went back on all of them. Like at the end of at the end of the Dark Knight, it's like okay, for the we're gonna keep Harvey Dent from the people. That's fine. Gotham needs this. Me, Batman, I'm going to take this up because I'm the Batman. And at, at this one, he's like, oh, oh, nobody likes me anymore. La, da, 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 da. And then you had Michael Caine who had flipped and was like, Batman needs to do this too. No, don't be Batman. And just all these things I felt like, or like, why didn't you talk about Harvey Dent? We're at the end of the other one. You're like, don't talk about it. And I just felt like they completely almost undid everything that was important about the end of what happened at the second, The Dark Knight. I Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That's just my opinion. But I couldn't help but, but think that. I don't know. I'm interested in something. I don't know. I don't know if I have an opinion on that. But I really like the part where Bane ripped uh, Arvidan's, <laughs> Arvidan's picture in half. Did you like how? Him. Did you that. like how he kept talking after there were no cameras standing there and no one was listening to him? <laughs> well, I, I feel like I feel like this whole this whole movie was like this huge social commentary. I and mean, well, the whole series is. But like Bane, like the reason he was so threatening, the thing I, the thing I think they did do well in the movie is it was like every traumatic post nine eleven nightmare thing that people were, <laughs> but people were scared about, like terrorists, nuclear nuclear weapons, um, you know, people using our own machines against us, uh, you know, just like um, rioting, prison break, all this stuff, all the stuff that we've been worried about since then was just all thrown into one movie. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, I feel like that's really, you know, so, that so, was powerful. I something I have an issue with, and did anybody have anything they want to say about that? So, okay, so I have a problem, or maybe I just, I don't understand it, may, and, I don't know, maybe you can explain it to me, I don't know. So we start the movie with act one, and we're figuring out what's going on. They're, you know, we're figuring out what's happening, and then we find out why they did what they did to Bruce Wayne, they got the nuclear weapon, and then we figured out why they gave it to Miranda Tate. And so I get all that. That all makes sense to me. And But then you have this entire period in the middle where it's like, what are you doing? Now, I know in Nightfall in the comics that happened, but I could be incorrect. But I believe the reason that Bane allowed that just – I don't think there, there was no nuke in Nightfall. But the reason that Bane let the criminals out was to – He had a quake mission. That right, but didn't he want – he wanted to rule Gotham. That was his thing. Okay, Whereas in this, he was just... He wanted the prisoners and homeless people to rule Gotham. But he didn't. He wanted to blow up Gotham. And he gives Batman this whole line like, okay, hope. And here's what I'm going to do to your city. I'm going to give you hope before... But what hope was there in the city? It was like, what? what is the point? Like, if you want to blow it up, blow it up. If you want to give them hope, then make them feel like they're being... Pre- like, it didn't make any... I, I just felt like there were two... What, what's going on? I don't know. I, I feel like it was, it was really confusing just... Bane's whole message, you know, it was delivered very well, but it was really confusing what the people of Gotham were supposed to be doing. And right. The overall, like, besides this, living comfortably in their homes, right? But the overall <laughs> sense of time in the movie, I feel like, was really bad. Like yes. trying to pace to see, like, has it been yes. two months? Has it been three months? Yes. Has it been? And they're never. It was just done really bad. Like you, ne- I never understood where I was in the movie. Like it's like, oh, it's the last day, but I don't feel tense or right, anything. It was supposed What's to be five on? months just passed by. Yeah. Like you, you never felt that was that. eleven minutes. <laughs> yeah, those 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 police were living on the ground for five months getting supplies. Like it just like, n- nothing like, felt I don't right. Care. Like it seems like they were yeah. just there yesterday. Like, right. They yeah. seemed fine to me. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. And that and that's also when the movie was stalling. So I was like, I don't right. even understand what was going on during that. I, I didn't like that at all. I yeah. And, and another thing. So obviously, from a budget standpoint, this one costs more. And there was a lot more happening, like from the scale. But I felt like the action scenes had less of an impact on me. And I feel like a good action scene, there's a certain amount of tension in it because what's leading up to it. Like to give you an example, in The Dark Knight, the scene where they flip the 18 wheeler and they're going around the tunnel. The reason I was so into that scene was because I thought you didn't know what was going to happen with Harvey Dent because I was tense. Like so, whenever he's blowing up the uh, the football field, even though I knew it was coming, it's tense. But a lot of this stuff, I just felt like was random blowing up. I wasn't invested in the story. So I'm like, this doesn't impress me. This is not This is a, not interesting to me. A couple of people me. on Facebook were talking about that, like just my friends, about how they felt like this whole movie was just constant explosions and things like that. And I guess when I watched it, I actually didn't feel that way. Like I, I felt like, yeah. I felt, Again, the only time I felt that way was when the stupid bat 
vehicle thing was in the movie because I didn't like but, it, but there were a lot of action scenes. I even like felt like his fight with Bane was anticlimactic. No. No. I felt no. like it was completely I, like, you're talking about You're talking about the second one, though, Mike. Right? the first one. Like, think, no, the first one was amazing. Okay. So, oh, about the so, okay. so, yeah. so although the first one was amazing, the first one was... Bruh. The second one, um, I at first, I kind of could see that when they're, like, fighting in the crowd, but there's this moment when Bane has Batman cornered against the pillar, against that pillar. and he's yeah. just, like, oh. wailing on I him. I liked it. And then I Batman moves, and he just, like, punches a hole through the pillar. That was incredible. Let's go back to Tom Hardy for a second. Um... Him throwing those punches, yeah, that is terrible. Yeah, they said yeah. he did a it whole bunch so of like mixed fast. martial arts yeah. training for it, yeah. and he and, and it looked and it, but you felt it every time he yes. swung a punch that it felt painful every single time. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really, really liked that. I, I mean, I liked the fight and I liked it more the second time. I think the score helped tremendously. Oh yeah, but I felt like it's like we're running around, we're running around. All right, bane fight, and I'm like, what? what? Bane yeah. fight. Bane fight, what's going on? And then, of course, the fact that he gets randomly freaking blown away by Catwoman. Yeah, I really want to talk what, about what happened uh, to him. Oh so, okay, yeah. this is, that whole We're here, scene, let's go, we've yeah, arrived. Yeah, let's, scene, go. let's talk about that wonderful scene right there. So, first of all, uh, they did the whole, like, uh, her little switch over where they show who she really is. I like uh, that she stabbed him. Right, right. I like how she stabbed I mean, she just stays she there with the knife, knife in, in the there while she's talking. And, 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 and really, Batman couldn't do anything because he was not only paralyzed with the knife in him, but like just the whole thought of the shock. The, of the shock scene. of what just yeah. happened was really all hitting them. Exactly. And, um, and, and like they, didn't, they did the way they did. The way they did the origin with all those flashbacks, I still hated that of Bane and her. Like, I get it, whatever. Like, I, those actually didn't bother me. Well, I'm sorry, but I thought it was really dumb. I like the fact. I like the fact that for the whole time, me. you thought it was Bane. I thought they did a good job. I'm like, oh, that is a girl, and it looks just like her. Yeah. But I didn't think of that. Right, right. This film played, did a good job of tricking the people that know the comic books because they yeah. they said the child sure, yeah. was born in prison. If you know the comic books, Bane was born in yeah. prison. They're playing. And the both. second time, you know, one like of my that. one of my issues was I'm like, I hate how they referred to Bane as the child. But they don't, and I did not realize yeah. that until the yeah, second they, time. No, they, they, like Batman right. does a lot, like Bruce Wayne says right. stuff. But of but course, he like, would as a yeah. as a character. Yeah. Correct. He would. Correct. 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 Well, he's been watching Oracle. the news. He's been watching Oracle the news. It's not, it's not on the news. People, did, people didn't know from the news. Remember, the people came in and the people and got... Because no one knew the bomb was going to go blow up well, and find know the bomb. Yeah, yeah. And so, to me, him just knowing that information bothered me. That would We need a Wait, scene gonna, of him. I'm going to derail a conversation about that ending part just for two seconds. I really didn't like and just did not believe that Catwoman did not put together that Bruce Wayne and Batman were the same person. Like when, when he kept going, well, I have this really special oh, friend, friend powerful knows. friend. And then even after yeah. when she knew, he was still kind of talking like that. Like after she had known that he was well, Bruce the point Wayne. She found out was whenever Bane, Bane said, said, well, first Wayne. he says, Mr. Wayne. Mr. Wayne. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's Josh's, you guys. Right. That's Josh's. He's out. But I, I just, so I just, I just never, next. I just never bought that the whole entire time. Right. Like I feel like she was smart. I she do feel good. like whenever she found out, though, I it thought was, hers was the good delivery expression. was good. Yeah, she not was, that way. I don't know. You can also play that off as she's too distracted. She wants this clean slate program. That's what she's focused on. Also, she's also a problem. Okay, okay. So, so back to the back to the ending part. So she's stabbing Batman. We will get back to that. And uh, she's doing a little speech. They're showing what the real, you know, flashbacks were really about. And then Catwoman appears and just hold on, hold on. Did you like? Did you like how Bane teared up? Yes, I did. I, did. I, I like but, that a lot. But I did feel like that the making her like the leader of that group now kind of made Bane to a lot of people feel like kind of a lackey. Yeah, and it did kind of it did kind of seem like I, that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that though. It didn't. I don't feel like it. It didn't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's any, I Maybe really that's because you're a lackey. I just don't really. Well, what, well, I guess what would be the <laughs> issue with him being a lackey? I, because he was like the smartest top, like just. I, 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 I enjoyed just, him being it, the mastermind me criminal too. this entire time, orchestrating all of this. And I thought that it just took him down, even a slight peg. And then still they, taking him right, down. It took, a peg. It, right there, even though he was still awesome, it did take him down the peg. And then Catwoman shoots him with a missile, and that's it. But before that point, he Bane was defeated. Let's say, um, assume, all right, so. And then, of course, Bane, he delivers that you have my permission to die, which I like seeing. Right. That, so we never would have gotten that. But once Bane realized that Batman climbed out of the pit, Bane said, oh, shit. Because Bane never climbed out of the pit. He said, but I broke you. Right. But Bane also never climbed out of the pit, which Fair. we, we kind of thought, you know, Bane was a kid that climbed out of the pit the whole time. Right. But yeah, remember, Bane never made it out of I, the pit. I didn't think I was going to say this, but. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bane, so I didn't think of it like that, so but I, 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 I think, think, yeah. think mentally... Touche, Mr. Green. Yeah. Touche. Points uh, for Andrew. Okay. Thank you. you so, that's all at the same time. 
I I agree. You that are was just, that was Bane's mental defeat. Physically, whenever Bruce Wayne was like, "All right, I'm punching this thing off of his face. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna get my little blades and try and slice like those." I like that. Um, I still, I did not, I don't like when, like, minor characters come in and save the day like that. Not minor, she is a major character. But mm -hmm. this, is, this is the Batman trilogy. He didn't get to finish it that way. Like, he didn't get to, like, finally defeat Bane. He didn't have that glory. But he I think did, he but did. I, I think he did. I feel like well, he did. Whenever he was, like, on the... The dude was seizing up. Batman right. was about okay, to let his okay, lights out, dude. And then it's, he got stabbed by a woman. Right, but if that didn't happen... Know, but then a woman looked, came back look, and beat Bane. That, look, <laughs> yes. Feminism. Yes. <laughs> That's... Ah, here's the theme of the movie. <laughs> I promise it wasn't... We found the treasure. Uh, yes, Batman had, I guess, defeated Bane, but there was no thematic defeat. You know what I mean? There That's was because that the battle wasn't thematic. There was moment of glory... Where we finally see Bane's downfall but, and what are you talking about? He, he sacrifices think, think himself in. That was the. Theme. I think the glory was whenever Batman said, "Oh, let's, then you." Oh wait, he didn't sacrifice himself. I can't kidding. wait. We'll get to that next. Yeah, next, right, sorry. <laughs> next, next, please. I, um, I think the the. the so the you liked that whole scene? Like you? Liked, no, 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 we're not done yet. We're not, no, oh, you talking about no, the Bane? Yeah, okay. You, you, you the, liked him getting shot by missiles though. You 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 thought that was cool. How was you going to get him out of the scene? Look, Batman just got stabbed. Right, something good. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you gonna get Catwoman back into the scene? I, 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 I see, even in the like, comics, even in the comics, Batman couldn't beat Bane. So I, I get that. Like they had I don't, someone else. I don't mind. Bane down. I'm sorry. Here, you weren't done, and I'm gonna. No, I'm saying. Uh, the, we were talking about thematic defeat. Did it yeah, matter? Uh, the thematic defeat I thought was was happened whenever Bruce Wayne said right before the stab. Then you have my permission to die. I yeah. think that was the final. That was the nail in the coffin for Bane. Bane was done then. But then he gets stabbed, so and, he has to come. And back. I like. Makes sense for him to And I like how he came back. And was going to kill Batman and betray Talia. And right. I, I think or Talia, to imagine the fire. Right now, I like don't mind awesome. that Catwoman came in and sh Selena Kyle came and shot her. What I mind is that well, what what happened with Bane? Like maybe I feel like what what, he what, what happened? He got hit by a missile. He got hit in the nose. But let's get some. But let's get some closure on that. Like what's, no, what's, I agree. That's what? that's what he got hit by, by a but, missile. But, but in the Batman comics, though, like the, the once the bad guys are defeated, they don't. Die, like, but yeah, I, I get that. They, I get they that. Gotta, they get knocked out. You know what I mean? I like, guess I felt like, like knocked out yeah. by. Yeah, I guess I, I feel like yeah, we should let's, let's acknowledge ba the main villain is dead. Let's let's do something with it. Even even the Joker got to spin around again, laughing for a little bit. It was Gin. It's Gin. He wasn't like the main villain anymore. Like it was like now it was it was it was the it focus was, was uh, on Talia. And that, that's the thing though. They they just completely from that scene on it was like Bane. We're gonna shoot him, write him out of the script there, and then it moves on to her. I, I feel like I feel like that whole. Th Except for that pause moment, I felt like that finale was too rushed. It's too rushed. Okay. The run up to fight, the him getting killed, it's too rushed. That that pattern was switching. What you just said, mm -hmm. okay, Bane was no longer the main bad guy. Yeah. Same thing happened in Batman Begins mm -hmm. and The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. One, there's pair, two pairs of bad guys in each one. Mm -hmm. Only one of each pair dies. Right. Ra's al Ghul, which happens to be the main bad guy, right. he dies. Two Face, which in my opinion, I think ha happens to be the main, has the most effect. I think I would say he's the main character. He's the main of character. The film. Of the dark right, and he dies. Yeah. And then Bane ends up being a pawn. He gets knocked out, and then but Talia the, but ends up being. It's different though because we knew from the beginning that the Scarecrow was not the main person. We knew think, from I, the beginning. I all the way he from says the my employer. So from the beginning, and right, then yeah. and, and in the Dark Knight, the Joker set him off to go. They were on two different paths, mm -hmm. and I felt like we ended his path. Like, if there was no lackey. They were evil. I mean, they were equal, yeah. and then we did his thing. Whereas in this one, and again, it didn't necessarily bother me, mm -hmm. but I felt like this one was a direct, immediate demotion of who we thought was the main person. And I felt like I agree that there are two villains, but I feel like the way that they went about revealing that was a little bit different in this one. Yeah. It doesn't... It ha me, it personally, it didn't necessarily bother me. It happened closer but, to the end in the third one than it did in the first... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, so. yeah. I mean, they still had like a good twenty minutes of the Dark Knight after right. the Joker okay. was done. So, Two actually had like a lot of time. So yeah. after that scene, they get you know they do another little uh, bat scene. They get a little yes. bat scene uh, where yes. it gets chased around for a while with shoot some rockets everywhere, fly around like a Transformers movie. And um, <laughs> do we want to talk about the fact that it's a wonderful, fr you know, it's a wonderful point that my friend Charlie brought up that if the bomb was going to blow up by just randomly deteriorating, there is Absolutely no way that they could put a to the second clock on it. Are we going to let that one slide? We're going to let that one slide. We're going to let that one slide? Okay, that's fine. I let it slide. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do want to mention that just having a nuke that's going to go off, 
I'm kind of disappointed that that was like the crux of that whole entire movie in general because I kind of would have expected something more from Christopher Nolan. I know what would you do? Make a gas that kills everybody and change the crazy. I'm just saying. It, <laughs> it's, I'm just saying it felt it had put a more old school, like more detective comics. Mm, old school. Yeah, more down. cliched and stupid. Put this movie. Out, no, I didn't like. It. I didn't the like it. The nuke, hey, the nuke I didn't like it. Any, I didn't like it when they did a nuke at the end of Avengers too. So I don't. I don't like all that. I didn't mind the nuke thing. being the thing. I didn't like how randomly they decided to bring in a device that was a nuke. Oh, by the way, we've been working on this and. Uh, you know, this thing could be a nuke. Right, yeah. And I mean, I mean, and then it, that whole scene of her driving around Hallie in the vehicle and stuff like that, I didn't, I, I didn't really like it. Even seeing it no. again, I didn't like it. It just seemed really, like, rushed. And Catwoman did some cool stuff with the little bike. Because the bike's just neat uh, to look at. Right. But, like, she's just blowing up random vehicles. But, and that's but really it. Died at the end when her, oh, yeah, that was, <laughs> there oh, are, there are she three was, scenes like, in this shoot, film that I consider everyone. to be horribly edited. That was one of them. The Foley scene? The Foley death scene was terribly edited. <laughs> there were honest, three of them, and that was one of them. I thought a lot more people were going to die in this movie that didn't right. die. Like, I thought all those cops were going to die when they were all going under the... Um, like a Harry Potter book. I, no, but, but, but I kind of wanted to... Like, the finale, I thought it was like, so dark. Not that many people really died that they showed, at least. Like, not even, no main characters really died, yeah. right. except for Bane. And, um, yeah, I just thought that was... I don't know. I, I didn't like any of that. So. Now, I had a severe problem with the fact because Nolan has... I understand that this is a a staple in these kind of movies, but I felt like Nolan has avoided... I felt like Nolan has avoided this. We've got a minute and a half to get this bomb the heck out of Dodge, and I'm going to stop, and I'm going to kiss Batman. Come on. Dude, it's Catwoman, man. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> it's Catwoman. I don't care. It, that, that scene lost all credibility from with me at that point, because that's just... Hollywood, man. Yeah, that but Nolan me. has. But that's my whole thing: is Nolan as a director has flown a book. No pun intended. Well, I guess it doesn't matter in this one since there was no flying. But no, no. You could. I feel like. I feel like. I don't necessarily agree with what you're saying, but there are a lot of parts in this movie. Do where you I get why like, that would bother? Yeah, me Yeah, I feel like it's and not even just Nolan, but the the two guys who helped write a lot of it too. Uh, I feel like they just went back to a lot of typical movie cliche type stuff that I yeah. actually wouldn't expect from them constantly, right. from like the new to where the very ending and just little parts of the movie where like the flashbacks too like all this stuff just seemed right. like he used randomly placing bats in the hole oh that was bad now yeah. let's talk about let's get there do you want to talk about the, the, the ending, Let, ending let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the autopilot that he randomly fixed six months earlier but he kept telling everyone that didn't fix and he didn't eject at least unless the scene was edited wrong he didn't eject until about three seconds before the bomb went off, but magically it was okay. No, they're saying he ejected. They're saying he ejected. Like they show him. Yeah, I heard. I think it was edited really was, bad. But when you read about what they, th yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It was either edited poorly or it's completely unrealistic. Well, it either matter. way, it was a so failure just, of a scene. You, even if you had the nuke go off that even that far away it would have knocked out like all the electricity sure, yeah. in gotham it would have like radiated that whole it would it, it would have been horrible no matter how because of the but, but even that i was like all right i'll go with that it's and the fact it's water. the fact right. that they edit it to look like he is flying in this thing which i thought that he was they were trying to trick you josh but no josh. <laughs> no Remember, dude. you have to have that glimmer of hope how else will you rise yeah that's uh, true yeah i mean i i hated that I, uh, hate it. I hate it but you know what as much as I felt like the ending with Alfred and you know him going to Florence and stuff like that was cheesy. Yeah, I didn't like it. I actually it, it worked for me in the movie. Like I, I completely acknowledge that this was stupid and I should not be liking this. But I I, I did actually. <laughs> I mean, let, let me put let me let me put it to you this way. It's not the ending. I thought I was okay with the John Blake thing. I was okay with that. Yeah. That part of the ending it bothered me. I didn't like it, but it didn't pull away from the overall. Like if I would have liked the rest of the movie. It would not have ruined it for me. Are you saying it's the ending we deserve, but not the one we need right now? No, I'm not saying that we deserved a better ending than that. But it's saying, fine, I'll deal with it. I would be able to deal with it, is what that's saying. How did you feel about the ending, Andrew? Oh, I like everything about the movie, so <laughs> I love the ending. Um, no, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty cheese tastic. But yeah. I guess it was implausible, ridiculous, and completely out of place with everything sure. else that was going See, on. See, but I don't think it was implausible. I think Sel I think Selena Kyle being there, I think all that stuff worked for me. I, I it didn't bother me. At all. I felt like he, I felt like at that point, who the Nolans nosedived into cliche to a point where I was just like, this is going too far. Mm -hmm. This is too much. I mean, that's completely subjective. Yeah, it's yeah, completely yeah. subjective. I, can't argue, I mean, I can't argue with that. I can see that completely because I'm acknowledging that it is cheesy and ridiculous. But when I was watching the movie, that really worked. Yeah, for it's me. like yeah. there's some 
part of me, like, whenever I go to the movies... Maybe so Hollywood's like, done this to me. I, I think that's yeah. what it is. I think yeah. Hollywood's Hollywood maybe did. ruined me a bit, and, yeah. like, I still kind of... Like some part of me. Sti- yeah, I'm not like, a pompous film dude like Josh. So that's what's got nothing to do with that? It's I because mean, in all the other Batman films, he never resorted to that. Yeah, and so no, why are you resorting it to? I just felt like you know in the Avengers things like that's going to happen, and that's fine because the Avengers has set itself up with a different consistent keyword consistent tone. Whereas like this mm-hmm. film and the two films preceding it, that kind of thing doesn't happen in them. So it just to me it was out of. It was sweet and it was nice and I liked them together. I thought it had good chemistry, but I felt like overall the tone of the film and the story and I just felt like it did not serve it. I thought it was yay for yay's sake and I just yeah. don't feel like that necessarily but has a place in the I think you had movies. a good point where I feel like this whole movie just thematically was inconsistent. Yeah. Like as much as I liked the movie and I really did like it, there overall. was a bunch of yeah overall I, I, but I, I still feel like the thing was not just inconsistent can but, we remind everybody that we all actually do like this movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> except, for, except, except, for, except for Josh except was actually Josh. really disappointed so I don't know I mean that we've been talking like a lot it. of trash on him but we, we actually did like it so I, you know why I'm talking trash is because <laughs> no I'm not talking trash I'm just saying that because you like to hate things no I don't like to hate things I think that Nolan set himself to a higher standard than what he gave us in this film. Not because of the Dark Knight. He did it with the Dark Knight, but in a lot of the films, even even the small independent films like Memento, he has set an incredible standard, and I don't feel like he met what he has set for himself. I don't feel like he met his own standards. If this were another film, well, I really don't feel like we'd be given... I don't feel like... uh, Let let, let me pose this question, Josh. Everyone... Do you think... What is your no, question, Joe Michael? Do you think and everyone. that he knew that this movie was going to be a success no matter what he did, so he maybe no. slacked off a bit? No, I don't okay, think that's, so. Yeah. I do not think that at all. Okay. I just, do you not think that or do not want to think I that? I don't think that. I honestly don't think that. No, I, mean, I don't I, I'm think saying that. I do have a lot of faith in him as a director. You don't think that's that, a valid... I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think they dialed it in at all. I'm not saying thing. that... Well, here's here's case. what I I'm think. Saying uh, maybe that is. I'll, I'll that give him. Happen. I'll give him credit, but then I'll take some away. So mm-hmm. I don't think that he. I felt like maybe he was, because he went into the Dark Knight with. He wasn't forced to go into the Dark Knight. That was a story he wanted to tell. Mm-hmm. Where I felt like he felt maybe obligated to do this, so he did it. However, I don't think that I felt like all of this what into the what went into the film was 100% Nolan. Because I'm sorry, I don't think Warner Brothers can tell Nolan what he's going to do. I don't feel like you can come in and say, well, I think this, you know, we at, during Spider-Man, we said that, well, maybe the studio wanted this. And, and I feel like you could say yeah. that for Spider-Man. You might could say that to the Avengers. But I'm sorry, Nolan doesn't get that pass. Oh, because I feel like be he, in 3D if it wasn't. Right, right. And I feel, like, I feel like he doesn't get that, he doesn't get that pass. So while I don't necessarily think that he just did it as a cash cow... I also don't think that he can. You can pass the buck onto the yeah, studios for some I of the think, air either. I think his movies are usually um, like very intelligent, right? And I think that the Dark Knight Rises on the surface seems like it's a lot more intelligent than it is, and we, we feel like that because of the other movies that he's done. Right. And I don't think the Dark Knight Rises is is like that. It's I not. think it's more akin to not like the Avengers, but more to a typical summer uh, blah, 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 type movie. And I feel like it it. It goes more into that. Mm-hmm. So we're looking at it just through a different lens. Because like we said, we were all like, Avengers, that's awesome. You know, it's summer blockbuster thing and they're doing this all right. But when we look at this movie, we expect something different. And it like pretends to be that. And that's why I feel like it's inconsistent because it goes that route sometimes. But then it just uses all these cliches from all these other movies. Right. I, yeah. and that's I, I think that's like, a yeah. really fair assessment. Yeah. I think yeah. And I, yeah, I just felt like... I, felt I can see like, why it would be disappointing. Like, I don't disagree right. with that. Yeah. I just felt like... I expected more because he's given more, and the, the the plot devices, the laziness, he hasn't shown, at least for me personally, for my taste, he hasn't shown that before. So albeit overall I, an entertaining movie, I just I felt like he did not fulfill the standard that he has set for himself as a director, right, right. as a writer, in some regards. In some regards, I feel like he exceeded them. But we can talk yeah, about yeah, that in a said, second. There, there, there were great parts in the movie, but I, I agree that there were just there was a lot of like I said, yeah. So this was Chris Nolan's Cars Two slash Brave <laughs> era. So hopefully it doesn't last long. It's, um, <laughs> I didn't see I didn't see that. Cars Two, and I yeah. like Brave. So. I didn't see Cars Two. Cars Two was bad. Oh, Cars Two. That's what we're talking about next week, you guys. Is Cars Two. <laughs> Why? Uh, tune in for that. I one. let me. I, I would like to say this. Now I know a lot of people. Did anybody have anything else they wanted to say specifically about the film? 
no. Nope. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fanboy here for two minutes. Okay, go for it. Yes. Um, and I think I get the right to do that because I was way, way more on the critical side of this film um, than <laughs> than tell, a normal fan would. I, I, you know, a lot of people hate Nolan because a, for some reason, he's the popular director to hate. Some people, some people think he's pompous, all this kind of stuff. And maybe you think I, I, they think there's too much exposition in his films. That one I could see it doesn't bother Especially me. The other the two, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, it, well, Inceptions. <laughs> the, but I, I feel like Nolan is, which is strange because he's got dual citizenship. He's not even. I feel like he's honestly one of, as far as the ones who are putting out movies now, one of the last great American action directors. And the I reason think, I think that is because sure, yeah. Nolan, number one, he said, I will not shoot this film in digital. I'm going to shoot it in film because aesthetically that looks better. And I know a lot of people don't realize why that's important, but for a director like, no, all the way down to the camera and how this film's going to look, it shows that he cares about his movie. The fact that he told the Hollywood studios, piss off, I'm not doing it in 3D. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. That's important, and the fact is, like, I'm going to do it in IMAX because I genuinely think it. I genuinely think it looks good. And he felt he could do something with right, it. Right, yeah. and he did, and he has. And then I think the fact that I felt like Nolan, the, the quote that's been used is he wants to get as much in the lens as he possibly can. And Inception, they didn't do any camera tricks. They had Joseph Gordon-Levitt. They taught him to fight in a spinning room. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anne Hathaway did a lot of her stunts. There's a lot of things. He, he's like, I'm going to use as minimal CGI as possible because it makes things look fake. When the football stadium, they didn't do the gladiator where we're going to do 1,000 people and duplicate. That was ten to 11,000 yeah. people. Yeah. The streets at the end, those were all cops. The Batcave, they built the entire Batcave. And it's just like he's not in, in a world that's so entrenched in CGI and fakeness and falsity. I continue. I feel like he continues to raise the bar and say, no, I'm going to do things on a scale, a good scale, and a realistic scale. And I just feel like he's like, no, I'm not going to let the studios get, get this over us. And I respect him, and I think that's important. Whether or not you actually like him as a director, I think it's important to recognize that he does stand for that. And I, I think in filmmaking, that is important. Yeah, it is. Cause, I agree. Yeah, because I mean, we saw stuff like Spider Man, which you know we, we all still like pretty much you know liked in general as a movie. Yeah. Um, and and there was a lot of CGI in there, and some of it they did really well, and it was like good. Especially for the CGI. lizard. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of speaking of the connection, the, the the one line about the giant alligator in the sewers and the Dark Knight oh, Rises. Killer Croc. Did anybody love that line? I, I know laughed. Andrew did. I was yeah, thinking but, of Neil but, the whole but time. Some, but some of that, but some of the stuff they did now, I'm glad. Like I never, said, Croc, not troll. <laughs> I felt I felt a lot of like between that and Avengers, I felt like it was really. You know, obvious that he just didn't use a lot of that CGI, and it felt. I like the way that it felt. Like, even aesthetically, his movies just have a really like um, real feeling. Even when they blew the bridge, and you're like, you're looking at the gap between the bridge. I'm like, they didn't blow this bridge, but it looks like they did. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and and the CGI that they did use, I thought it was fine, and I think that's just, I think that's incredibly important, and yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so real quick before we jet, thank you guys for listening. I feel like a lot of people I know, a lot of people listening to this would tell you that... Neil has something to say. Oh, you would? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I just didn't know if you were, you were you still wanted to finish up with something else. There, no, 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 no. I'm good. I've hit all my points. Okay. Um, I was just going to say... Now, I feel like a lot of people would tell you, what movie are you looking forward to the most this year? And they would tell The Dark Knight Rises would be on that list. So now that it's gone, believe it or not, there are actually other movies coming out this year that are going to be good. So I'm interested in getting from y'all three, four movies that you think are going to be worth seeing now that we're past the dark night. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I can list three or four movies off the top of my head right now that I really want to see. The um, Hobbit. <coughs> sorry, it's, I'm trying to hold it in, but The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> I that would be like, this week. I think I can name one or two. Definitely The Hobbit yes. would be up there. I, I feel like we, we can talk about the uh, the Man of Steel trailer since we all saw yeah. it now, okay. right? You wanna, sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, 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 can, I can start talking about that. That's yeah. fine. Um, so... In general, I think Superman's dumb. Oh, yeah. So, Anyone object yes. to that in this yeah, room? Right? No. no. But, okay. but, but, like, visually, and that's what Zack Snyder does, right? Right. I felt that uh, when they first, when they showed Superman, he was flying and breaking the sound barrier. I really liked the way that looked. I actually, right. I really did like it. But, um, I mean, I have no idea what to expect from that movie. So. I thought, now, it could just be the song that they used. I feel like that's a standard, like, go-to emotional song. Yeah. Yeah. Ring, but never again off that. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers! There you go. Um, but so. I, I felt like I felt like that was I'm like I am more emotionally attached to this trailer than I have been for anything Superman related in a long time. Sure, yeah. Except for Smallville. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have anything they want to? I'm not touching it. I mean, 
sure. We'll Still hate Superman. I know, but I'll give it a shot. It Why made not? me. It made me curious. And I'm sure there are good people working on it, though. I mean, I'm sure there really are some good people working on it. I'm sure they're trying. And like I said, they have the. They're they have, have, they they have the, on this. They have the low ex. One. Like everyone going into it with low that's expectations true. on their side, because they I mean they just got to be decent. And I'll probably be impressed. Exactly. That's, so, I mean, <laughs> so they, really, they don't have. There's the hurdle isn't that high. Yeah. Right. So, right. I mean, they can't screw up too badly, can they? <laughs> no, nah, they're not following a. Uh, I mean, dude, Superman Returns. Jesus. They're not following a. Um, Superman Lost. 64. So, Lord of the Rings, Andrew? <sighs> no, The Hobbit. Oh, Neil my bad. Right. Oops. It's a prequel to Lord of the Rings. Oh, uh, that's what I'm excited about. I mean, yeah. Nothing else to it. So we'll talk about it last week. Uh, uh, the, I, I want to say another one, but I know Josh wants to use it. Go for it, Josh. Fantastic. I, I mean, like the, I like the I like the uh, the song and the trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Song, the trailer. I, I'm, so, so, I'm so excited. The more I see that trailer, oh, the more I like wait, the show. Wait, wait, sorry. Him. Random Batman aside from Dark Knight Rises, I actually really did like the chant they were doing in the prison. Yes. I really did like that yeah. a lot. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I thought it was more effective in the trailer, but yes, overall, yeah. yes, I, I didn't that. watch the trailer, so oh, that's for right. Me. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say, obviously, I, I said it last week. Django Unchained is on my list. Oh yeah. Um, PT PT Anderson's the master. No. P.T. Anderson's The Master is on my list. Yes. Um, of course, The Hobbit's on my list. And then, I completely forgot about this, Steven Spielberg's new Abraham Lincoln movie starring Daniel Day-Lewis as Abraham Lincoln. Mm-hmm. The vampire. I mean, no way. No, 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 <laughs> that one. Yes, the other <laughs> Abraham Lincoln movie. That's going to be good. And um, there's a film. It's an ind- I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it's an independent film, but it's a film. It's called Seven Psychopaths. It's an Irish film by Martin McDonagh. It's the guy that did In Bruges. If you've never seen In Bruges, watch the movie. It's a great film. It's a good movie. Um, Anyways, he's got a movie coming out, and those are my big, those are my big post Batman movies. Are you, I think. Is no one excited for Total Recall at all? Or no? Really? Oh, oh dude! Really uh, uh, the trailer was pretty the tra- good. The trailer, with the, had the girl. They did the show the three boobs. Like, yeah, they didn't you know, show the now, boobs, but they did actually. Now have you that. know why you need three hands. And it was a hot Asian chick too, so that was a plus. So you're, you're, you're right there. Yeah. Woo. Um, <laughs> I mean, but the new Resident Evil movie that's gonna be really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can't wait for that. Mmm. Can't wait for. Two is this year. Taken 2? No, next year? No, I think it's next year. Hmm. How, how do we feel it about Taken 2? I didn't even watch the trailer yet. Taken 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I like Taken 1 a lot more than I thought I, I was mean, going to. okay, let's... Like let's Taken 2 is exactly the same premise. Right. Exactly yeah, the that's same. That's fine. It's as, a, long as, a, as, as long as he keeps seller. doing... As long as he keeps doing his thing, it'll entertain me. That's and I have no problem sure. with that. Um, there's a certain expectation I have from that film, and as long as it fulfills that, yeah, that's fine. sure, why not? Um, see it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Does anybody have any other things they'd like to throw out on the list? Um, Wreck-It and, Ralph. Yeah, Wreck-It, Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, yeah. And it's super like excited for that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be Rally. all types of nerdgasms going on oh, for yeah, characters dude. from everywhere. Yeah, so. Bowser's Fireballs. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. There's Batman, uh, our... The Dark Knight Rises. Our ramblings yes. Let, let's just reiterate. We, we, man, this movie was so hated on for the last hour and a yeah, half. Yeah, you know, I kind of feel I, bad. I just feel like, like we just need to say... It's like talking smack like I, about I your good really friend when it. he's not here. Yeah, right. it's, it's yeah. easy to point out the negative stuff, but like I came out of the theater being like, hey, the movie that was still pretty good. awesome. So I yeah, let's, I didn't feel disappointed. Only well, one of us here felt disappointed. It's, it's, uh, that's it's, fine. It's, I'll stand no, by that statement. It's better... It, Look at it this way, Josh. It's easier to look at the whole trilogy as a whole thing instead of just the particular Dark Knight. If Rises. I look yeah. at it as a trilogy as the whole thing, it fails even more. You want to keep going there? Wow. <laughs> That's That's great. Great. I didn't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> Mass Effect 3 just got brought up. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't touch Mass Effect. No, but, I I really, but, oh, I, okay. but I really... Yeah, no, I, I really liked it. I liked the trilogy as a whole now, and it had yeah. more, I have more respect now for Batman Begins, even though I still halfway fell asleep when I rewatched it. <laughs> Wait, did you like Dark Knight Rises better than Batman Begins? Yeah, I want to. I want to know that real quick, like how how we all felt about these movies in order of how they go. So, how did you feel, Josh? In like order, rank them. Yeah, like, okay. yeah. Oh, You're gonna rank the movies. How about you start, Neil? Oh, I can easily start. <laughs> so mine just goes the Dark Knight, and then the Dark Knight Rises, and then Batman. Where's begins. what's the gap between one and two? Um, between the Dark Knight, I actually I really like the Dark Knight Rises like separate from Batman altogether. But I, I mean, it's not that not that big. I mean, I, I like I really like the Dark Knight Rises. So. Right. Yeah, but really, there's a huge gap between those and Batman that Begins. That was my yeah, question. Yeah, because Batman Begins just blows. So. See, I, I'd I say I would probably say that just Dark Knight. Then I would say Batman Begins for me, and then probably Rises like last. I'd say that's yeah, true. Depends on what day of the week. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Dark Knight would be at the top, and then on a good day, 
be Dark Knight Rises and then slightly under Batman Begins on another day. Batman and, and Robin. Batman Begins <laughs> and then right under Dark Knight Well, that's, Knight that's Rises. just spoken that it's better than all the <laughs> of others. Course, dude. It's just so hard to hate that movie more than another one when I was so scared of the bad guy yeah. compared yeah. to other villains. Like, it's so hard and for me Hathaway. to rank. That's, I think, yeah, like for me... The cast alone, just, oh man. To, to me, obviously, The Dark Knight is, is, is number one. Um, to me, Batman Begins and... The Dark Knight Rises are kind of sitting neck and neck. I feel like Batman Begins was a more cohesive story. Mm. The themes were all there. It was better written. I felt like it was better directed. It was consistent. But it's a more compact story, and that's fine. That's what it needed to be. So whereas The Dark Knight Rises, the, some of the things that it got right, except for the random out-of-focus shots, yeah, I thought yeah. the cinematography was better. The editing, for the most part, was good. The score was better. And a lot of the elements that were really good in Batman Begins... So, I don't know. I feel like comparatively those two are equal in... I felt like Batman Begins was a more consistent story, but I feel like all the other elements that make up movies were substantially better in The Dark Knight Rises. So they kind of sit there. But I feel like The Dark Knight was the apex of both of those together. It was the Empire Strikes Back. (laughs) I guess. No, I I do do feel like that's actually a comparison to me. Oh, it's a perfect comparison, actually. Okay. Yeah, I haven't... I'm I'm out of touch. (sighs) I'm a nerd. I mean, I still feel like that's the only other trilogy where they were all actually decent, so... Yeah. So, all right, guys. So, thank you all for listening to that. Uh, tune in next week when we talk about something. Something awesome. Um, yeah, totally we get awesome. you guys. Don't, you're not even Ice right. Age was, 27 or whatever movie this was. It's like That's the right. Land Before Time movies. <laughs> oh, we should talk about Land Before Time. We should. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. right, everybody vote. All of on, them. Land Before Time marathon. Everybody vote on Facebook. Should we talk about Land Before Time? It's up to you. Yes. Okay. So. All right, so thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, we know this one was long, but hey, you know, it's The Dark Knight Rises. It was the big hey, one. So and was my ponytail. Let's start going pony selling. Right? You want to you wanna close this out, John Michael? Yeah, close that out, John. Oh, yeah. yeah, I haven't done my Bane voice yet. I have one left. Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're out. We're out. <laughs>